Welcome everyone to Maverick Stadium in Arlington, Texas. My name is Thad Trover, joined by Bobby Studer here in Arlington. We are here for the matchup between the two football clubs of the University of Southern Alabama Jaguars and U University of Texas Arlington Mavericks. Uh, the two football clubs coming together to meet. I believe this is the first time they have played each other. Uh, both teams are looking pretty good, two pretty good clubs playing. Uh, we will be joined at halftime with a, an ex-NCAA Division III football player to give you kind of insight what's going on. But we are going to go here in just a moment down to the field after they've just finished the coin toss. And we're going to have a good play. by UGA I'll be doing your play-by-play, -play and Bob will be doing our color. And we'll keep you updated what's going on in the game. As you'll notice, UTA has the brand new logo you can see on the helmet here, the, the horse head, if you if you can see that right there. It just got passed, and the, the helmet's just been uh, fitted with these brand new stickers. It looks awesome. And UTA's club, Maverick, uh, Maverick football, has only been in existence since about January. Their first season went 3-7 and seven last year. They had a good chance to go 6-4, and four, blew a couple fourth-quarter leads, and uh, almost made the playoffs in their inaugural season, but the three and seven record was the best ever for an expansion team in their in their division. So you know, congratulations to them on a on a good opening season. And this is just going to be kind of an exhibition game and a tune-up before they start their their next their second season in uh, the spring of 2008. Yeah, correct. Um, both teams looking pretty good. There is a bit of a disadvantage tonight for the Jaguars from Alabama. They had some issues with their traveling. Uh, in their bus, and they did not get here until just recently, and going off very little, <coughs> excuse me, little sleep, if any at all. 30 minutes of rest at their hotel. It's supposed to be picked up yesterday at 4 in the afternoon. The bus didn't pick them up till 3 in the morning, so. And only having about 20 to 25 players dressing for the game tonight, so it's going to be a long night, and if things don't go well, it's going to be even longer night. Uh, UTA dressing almost their entire full team uh, tonight. We're going to see a whole lot of about everything on their offense as far as the offensive game plan. So uh, we'll let you know what's going on. And here in just a moment, we will go down to the field as they are doing the national anthem. And we'll be back with you shortly for the opening kickoff to the game between the University of Southern Alabama uh, Jaguars and the University of Texas Arlington Mavericks. Jaguars the north. Let's see here. De definitely, obviously, just from what we can see, the uh, uh, UTA obviously outmanning, uh, just from the looks from up here, just absolutely outmanning as far as uh, players suited up the, the Jaguars tonight. They look like they will be ready, and uh, the Jaguars are in for a long game tonight. Yeah, I think UTA has got about 36 dressed. Jaguars, as you said earlier, only 20. They have a big, they, have a, they started the season about uh, 30 players are down now. A few of them decided to stay back in Alabama, and so they're definitely under man. We're going to see the definition of Iron Man football tonight. And the uh, kickoff team is now going onto the field for the Mavericks as they get ready for the opening kickoff. You got two men returning deep back on about their own 11, 12 yard line uh, for the Jaguars. <laughs> Kicking off for the Mavericks, going to be number four, Daniel Phillips. His nickname on the team is Sorry, Kick. Grew up playing soccer, went to Frisco High. Josh, and he does all the kicking duties for UTA, and uh, most of the players apparently only know him as Kick. Well, from what I heard from the coaches, uh, we were both down there when we heard him say, a lot of these guys, uh, they see him so inconsistently that he they forget his name, so they just call him Kick. And we are ready 
for the opening kick here. The beginning of the first quarter here in Arlington, Texas, between the UTA Mavericks and the University of Southern Alabama Jaguars. The ball posted up and ready to be kicked at the 30-yard line. A little bit different than the high school games we're used to calling. It was about five yards, makes it a little bit better. And they've actually moved, the return men for the Jaguars have actually moved up to about the 15. And a little bit of a delay here. Looks like they are waiting for, uh, having a conversation on the sideline between the ref, side ref, side uh, judge here and the coaches for the Mavericks. Had a little personnel issue. They are going to be moving some people to the other side of the stadium. I guess do some uh, a new chain gang. And <laughs> Didn't have a chain gang set up. <coughs> yeah, they're going to go ahead and recruit the chain gang right there. I hope they uh, made room on their scholarship program for uh, chain holders. And there is the whistle for the open kickoff to be proceeded. And the uh, kicker raises his hands, and here he's going to approach the ball, and the kick is off, and it's, it's a, a short fake kick. on side. It's going to be recovered. And it is picked up right away by the Mavericks. So the opening kickoff uh, is a fake one. Catch them sleeping. Coach Hyden not holding anything back. Not holding anything <laughs> back. Phillips' uh, kick right there with a perfect execution. Ball went about exactly 10 yards before one of the UTA Mavericks picked it up and recovered it. So the, uh, the Mavericks come on the field with their offense. And why don't you, uh, Bobby, why don't you tell us who we're led by tonight? Well, Mavericks going to be led by Begg. Jaron Begg is going to be your starting quarterback. I believe in him in the backfield. Uh, behind him is going to be Mark Frisk as well. We're going to see some of Brandon Sanders and a little bit of Kendrick Rose. And right off the bat, we're going to see the Jaguars having to play defense and get winded first thing instead of getting the ball on offense. Taking some of the time off the clock, the defense is going to start on the field. Probably not something that the coaching staff had in mind for the Jaguars to get tired first thing. Mavericks in the wishbone. And they've got him tight under there. The quarterback is under the center. And Begg snaps the ball and hands it directly off to the fullback. And he breaks up the middle, runs over a few people, takes it out to about midfield for about an 11-yard gain. They're going to give him exactly 11 yards and mark that for a first down on the first play of the game, an 11-yard run by the fullback. That was Rose carrying the ball from the fullback position, as you said. And I think the... Uh, the Jaguar defense keying a little bit on the running backs and you know, quick hand off the fullback, a little surprise there. Well, you run out of men when you got three in the backfield and a quarterback, and I have a funny feeling that the Mavericks are really gonna try and play a little smash mouth here early, kind of wear down the defense and uh, be able to pull away towards the end as the, as the defense got nine men in the box and they bring him down immediately and he's gonna lose a yard on the play. Oh, he, there's a fumble and he gets to the outside and recovers it and they end up after being hit for a one yard loss it's going to be about a three-yard gain. Yeah, Make Brandon, it second and seven. Brandon Sanders uh, lost the ball there, but it's going to result in about four more yards for him. Pretty good play if you look at it on the uh, on the stat sheet, but not very good if you're the coach. Maybe a little uh, jitters. They they lost their first two games pretty bad. I think Trinity with their 15 lateral play, they didn't use it against the Mavericks, but they they beat them 53 to zero in that game. So UTA, you know, still those growing pains. They've been around for less than a year. And there is a fake handoff. It's, it's pitched back to the wide receiver, and he's going to break the tackles and get drugged down for about a five, actually for about an eight-yard loss. So the, the pitch back reverse to the wide receiver gets broken up bad by the defense. And that is number 11, and that is number 98 for the Jaguars, who get out there and uh, force him to the out of outside. And number 41 is actually going to bring him down. That was Frisk, and Frisk, you know, Frisk is going to be your, your main runner tonight, the key cog in the offense for the Mavericks. So, you know, get used to seeing him, and I guess they're just trying to get him some space and use his speed and agility around the right end, but just not a whole lot going. Jaguars not fooled on that one whatsoever. That was actually, I believe it was number 45, Ross Gabriel on the tackle. And UTA comes up again in the two eye back set, and he's under the center, quarterback is, and that is uh, Begg, and he's going to drop back, and he's going to break through a tackle and get drugged down for about a... 15-yard loss sack. So the, he was back there as one man to get away from, and the offensive lineman let him get by, and he got drugged down bad back there, and that's just going to be a huge loss, and they're going to end up having to kick the ball away. So not a good start 
had a good opening play, opening drive by the fullback, an 11-yard gain, and it just went backward from there. Here to give him a little bit of forward progress. He ended up being tackled at the 30, but they're going to mark it at the 34-yard line. That was just a great play by the defensive line, breaking through. Looked like it was going to be a rollout pass and thrown deep, uh, possibly down the field, but the defensive line just broke through, busted it up, and chased him all the way back to his own 30, 35, and just drug down as the, punt, the punter standing his own 21. Catches the snap, oh. bobbles it, picks it up, and is going to get hit in the backfield, and it is going to be a four or five bad plays in a row. Here comes the defense for UTA. So uh, the outmanned Jaguars showing up on defense with four, four defensive plays in a row. A bit, about a 16, 17 yard loss sack. And then a defensive play on the punt. The, ba the ball's dropped, picked up by the punter and then just swarmed on. And the Jaguars will start offense deep in the Mavericks uh, territory. And they will be starting right about the 27-yard line. Yeah, this is better field position than if the Mavericks hadn't onside kicked at the beginning of the game. Now the Jaguars are going to take over at the 28-yard line instead of taking off, you know, getting the ball at their own 28 to start off. So really good field position here. Mavericks showing blitz and backing up. It's a handoff right up the middle, and he's going to lose it, or he's going to gain about two yards on the play, making it second and eight. The running game, the kind of, you know, the coaching staff for the uh, – the Jaguars not really giving indication of exactly what they want to do, but they work. They, they're going to have to do a little bit of everything to kind of keep themselves in this game. Well, the head coach is actually playing tonight. Chad Reese is going to be on the field all night long for the Jaguars. Amazing. I don't think the coach for UJ will be suiting up tonight. And here is second and eight, and he's going to drop back and hit to the, ra the running back. He breaks the middle, breaks one tackle, and gets drugged down for about a three-yard gain, which is going to set up third and about four or five. Gino Evans on the carry. And they are almost and within red zone. Five. Their kicker tonight for the Jaguars not suiting up. They have not indicated which kicker they're going to go with. We don't know that yet. But you would assume that if they're going to get into field goal range, they will have to get into much closer since it will be a less experienced kicker. Third down, five conversion here. And there's the pitch to the running back to the outside. He's going to break through and get drugged down, but not before. It looks like they're going to spot him for a first down just barely. So the first down, the very first first down of the game is going to go to the Jaguars on three tough runs by the running backs for the Jaguars. First down, first and 10 at about the 18-yard line for the Jaguars. And they're in the red zone. And this is about the best they could do after getting surprised with that onside kick early on now deep in Maverick territory. Did uh, did the coach for the Jaguars, uh, Bobby, did he uh, specifically say anything about where he was going to be playing tonight? Uh, I think he said he's going to play some tight end, some defensive end, some linebacker. I think he's playing left tight end right now, actually. And there is a shotgun snap. It's a rollout to the outside. It's a fake option. Handed off and hit immediately as soon as he catches the ball. Gets hammered by the defense for UTA. That is number 60. Jacob Ayer just hit. I mean, as soon as he catches the ball, moves to the outside, just got hammered, dropped down, although he did pick up about a yard, yard and a half, Jacob made I something positive out of it. It was a painful positive yardage. But they, they do continue to push in to the end zone. Yeah, I, guess I think we're going to see a lot of run here tonight. It's got two club bowl teams. Most, you know, they're going to be doing – a lot of runs, just easier to do. Passing is so difficult to now master, you and you're only practicing six hours a week. And there is a handoff right up the middle, and he's going to pick up about six and a half yards on the play. He gets dropped down just outside the 10-yard line at about the 12-yard line. Now, on that particular play, Bobby, they had twins to the left and twins to the right, obviously trying to break. You know, you don't have many people suited up to play offense, so they're going to do their best to spread out that defense as best you can. And if they're going to be forced to run, they're going to force UTA to run with them too. Yeah, you know, both these teams, I don't know which one's going to be conditioned better, but conditioning is going to play a huge factor in the second half. Switch team, you know, I, I know they only practice six days a week. Both teams, I believe they said, you know, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, they practice from four to six in the afternoon. I guess it's a, it's a very common thing. And we do, have a, we do have an injury on the field. I'm sorry about that, Bobby. They're helping one of the, uh, looks like one of the offensive linemen for the Jaguars walk off the field. He's walking, he's inside the 20-yard line. And he's got two coaches helping him off the field. So not what you want to see from the coaching staff as a player goes off the field and making that one less player. And that is number 60 for the Jaguars. That's Russ Allen. 
5'11", 235 pounds, so not a whole lot of meat to take the offensive line, but he did make it this far, so we'll give him a hand. With nine, just a little over nine minutes to go, the quarterback drops back, looks deep into the end zone, it's gonna pass, and it is going to be intercepted in the end, oh, it was an incomplete pass, they, they're waving it off, almost picked off in the end zone by number 30 for the Mavericks. Johnson, yeah, they flicked the, the handoff right, came back around the left option, which they used earlier to pick up the first down, and instead of running the option, the, uh, the quarterback, Crabtree looked downfield, and you know they keep rolling him to the left because he's a left-hander. You know, it's a little bit easier to, to throw on the run if you're rolling to the side you throw. The receiver was there. He's wide open. Crabtree just floated it a little high, and Jonathan Johnson got his hands on it, almost turning it into a turnover. And we're going to see a field goal attempt. The ball's down. The kick is Block. up, and it is blocked by UTA, and they're going to pick it up at the 30 and get out to the 40 and drug down finally. Out of bounds for the tackle at about the 43-yard line. Number three, Jaron Big coming up with the ball off the block Jaren kick, and he might come back into quarterback looking like he's going to head off the field, but he was your quarterback earlier in the game. Give him a breather, but he probably will be back momentarily. So both times we've seen the offense for UTA come on the field. Both times it's been the, re the result of a, a turnover. Special teams play, yeah, making a huge difference early on. So we had a block punt early in the game. I'm sorry, we had an onside kick uh, recovered. We had a blocked kick um, stop, and then we had a blocked field goal. And there is the handoff up the middle to the running back, and he's going to drag it over into Jaguar territory for about a six-yard gain. Yeah, it was Frisk again. He's going to be, like I said earlier, a key cog tonight for UTA. Frisk has got some quite a bit of speed. They really feel like that if they can get him through the, uh, the line and the linebackers, he can make a few moves and really make a big play for the Mavericks tonight if they can just get him through. Octavius Ellis entering the ball game for the Mavericks. He'll be lined up at wide receiver to the uh, the left-hand side. Quarterback right now is Bodovich. Split backs. Two wide receivers. It's going to be a, oh, we got a little mix-up. They got a fumble there was lose. A I think fumble. Bodovich got back to it, but it uh, looks like they're going to try and hand it off to the fullback up inside the middle and just a little... Uh, a little too much contact between quarterback and fullback. He did turn around. It looks like there might have been a little miscommunication between the running back and the quarterback because they both converged right into each other, causing the fumble. Luckily, one of the Mavericks landing on the ball. Well, That'll bring up third and third. 10 now. Got to get all the way to the other side of the field, the 45-yard line to pick up that first down. So you can expect a little bit of a pass here, maybe a trick play reverse or something. wishbone formation receiver split to either side yeah and they've got those wide receivers split really wide trying to spread out that defense and it's a handoff right up the middle again he's going to get right back where he started right at it midfield that was Rose's second carry he got the first carry of the game that went 11 yards for a first down trying to go that same magic there again and they are forced to punt again but this time they're going to be punting not from deep in their own territory they're going to be punting from about their own uh, 37 38 yard line which should put the Jaguars pretty deep in their territory, pending a pretty decent return. Well, punting is number 28, but we do not have a name for number 28 on our roster. And they've actually got, two, well, look at here, um, Bobby, they've got two people deep here, so they are really going to try and make something of a return here. They don't even attempt the block, and there is the catch, and there's a block made for him. He gets to the outside of the 20, and he's drugged down with a great tackle by number I believe that is number 56 and number two for the Mavericks. So with 6.44 to go, we have no score in the game, and it is going to be first first and 10 for the, uh, the Jaguars of South Alabama, and they'll be starting this drive from their own about 22, 23-yard line. Exactly right on the 22-yard line was they're marking it. So we've seen a pretty decent drive by the uh, Jaguars moving the ball down the field, which led to a blocked field goal so we know even though it wasn't really a, a, that serious of a drive as they did start the drive uh, pretty deep in um, the Maverick territory and now you're going to see uh, two wide receivers one to the split to the left one to the far right quarterback under center drops back passes pitches to his running back and he's going to break a few tackles and slice through and fall down after about a seven yard gain second and three coming up there's number 22 Evans and uh, he's already got a couple carries tonight Number 22 for the Jaguars is sitting on the turf. This is not looking good for the Jaguars. They may be running out of players here. People playing injured, and he hops back up, and he's going to hustle back. 
Uh, th this team tonight going to have to redefine the term shaking it off. <laughs> yeah, with only 20 players, you're talking <laughs> at least nine guys going both ways, not to mention all the special team stuff they had to go. So I'm guessing that uh, most of their team knows every position in case they have to go in at other places. If you are athletic, you will play them all. There's a handoff right up the middle, and he's broken up, ended, but not before he picks up about three and a half yards, and that's going to set up a third down and two, which they, you know, they've got a pretty good percentage time. Third, third down, third down, I think they're one for two. Make third and one. That was Leach, the fullback, getting a carry on a little counter play, started him off going right, came back to the left up the middle, using a little what UTA used against them, trying to get the uh, the fullback going. There's number 35 on the tackle. And he is not listed on our roster either. And they have got seven men in the box. They are bringing the blitz, and there's a handoff, and he's met immediately, but it's going to be close. They Their forward progress, they're showing he picked up the first down, so we are going to have another Southern Alabama first down. Same exact play as before, trying to use that fullback coming across little counter play well the defense for the Mavericks they're not they're not um, they're not giving up that big play they're not letting him break through the line but he is he is picking up three or four yards per carry so you don't necessarily need the big play if you're picking up three or four yards to carry you just need three downs 510 to go in the first quarter and we're gonna see the wishbone again for the eye for the um, shotgun the shotgun oh yeah that is the quarterback back there the shotgun he's been lined up under center and it's a fake and it's a pitch out to the running back he's after the 30 breaks the 35 Drops his shoulder and gets pushed out of bounds. And he's going to take about three hits. And that's about a three-yard gain they're going to give him. Ran about 25 yards. Picked up three by number 22. That is Geno Evans. five foot nine, 165 165-pound running back for the Jaguars. Yeah, they're trying to get a little misdirection going on here. We've seen the counter play two times in a row prior to that. And then they go there, have the two backs split on either side of the quarterback. Fake the handoff to one, come in left, and then run the option, a reverse out and uh, try and get the ball in Evans' hands as he is their uh, their key running back. Well, on that particular play, uh, the defense had great pursuit. I mean, you got three or four guys out there ready to take him on as he is in shotgun formation again with dual running backs to his left and his right. He drops back. He's going to look downfield a little bit, throw it, and it's going to get intercepted and have made a block. He's down to the 30, to the 25, and he's going to get pushed out of bounds at about the 20, 21-yard line. So another turnover. Had two wide receivers out, a tight end and a wide receiver out there. The, the interception made by Jonathan Johnson, he didn't drop it this time. I think we have, might have had a little miscommunication. The wide receiver on the far side of the field looked like he was going on a fly route just straight up, and the uh, the tight end had come out on an out route about 10 yards deep, and he threw it pretty much between those it's two right guys. Right in between them. Didn't seem, you know, maybe he was expecting his receiver to run a curl and turn around right at the sticks, but uh, instead there was no receiver there, and... Jonathan Johnson just made a great read on the ball, playing the ball, not the man, and was able to come with the interception, get a nice return back about 30 yards down to the 20, so right at the tip of the end zone right now. Yeah, UTA starting in the right at the red zone at first and 10 on the 20, and there are, we got a, a, a wishbone, he's going to drop back, and it's a handoff right up the middle. He's going to break a few tackles and finally get drugged down, but not before he takes it for another 11-yard gain. So the running game really getting it done. I don't believe they've even passed the ball one time tonight for UTA. And that was Rose again on that handoff that they uh, they tried to pick the first down earlier and opened the game with the, uh, the, the same exact 11-yard gain on first down of the game. So. so on first and 10 from the 20, they march it down to the 11 after one run, and it is now first and goal from the 9. And same formation as before with one receiver split. The defense shows blitz come in, and there's the run. He's going to break up the middle, break a tackle, and get upended and fall into the end zone for a touchdown. That was Frisk, and he followed Rose. It looked almost the exact same as the play before with Rose leading him up into the hole and finding a man to block, and Frisk just cut perfectly off that block back to the inside and found some pay dirt. Frisk dropping his shoulder, and the defender meeting him and nailing him, but he, instead of pushing him back, he lifted him straight up and flipped him and landed him in the end zone. 3.27 to go. UTA is the first one to strike. It is 6 to nothing, pending the extra point, making it 7 to nothing here in just a moment as they line up for the kick. And it's going to be Phillips' kick into uh, attempt PAT. That is Daniel Phillips. There's the kick, the snap, and it is good, making it 7 to nothing. 3.27 to go here in the first quarter in Arlington, Texas. We are at Maverick Stadium in Arlington, and it is 7 to nothing. 
UTA Mavericks over the University of Southern Alabama Jaguars. A pretty uh, ex exciting first quarter so far. We've had a blocked kick, a, um, a blocked extra point, a muffed punt and tackled for a loss, two huge sacks, a couple fumble recoveries and interception, and a run up the middle. Alley Cats Family Fun Center and Bowling Alley is a proud sponsor. Game of the UTA Maverick for the event. Of they invite you to host your next party or event at Alley Cats. They offer great team building programs. Birthday parties are always more fun at Alley Cats. They feature the most entertaining bowling experience in town with their huge four lane wide projection screens. Don't miss the Alley Cats multi level 7,000 square foot laser tag arena. Visit their ad link on Pain Entertainment site, Alley Cats in Arlington. Well, here we go. We, uh, you wonder how uh, how much of a beating these guys have taken. You know, there's a couple guys playing injured or playing hurt right now for the Jaguars, Bobby, as UTA lines up. And you know, UTA at any given point, they don't have a big team, but they've got a, a much more fresh team than the Jaguars tonight. It doesn't help that you're you're out. You've only got 20 to 24 men dressed, and you had no you didn't have a really good night's sleep. Well, that and the other thing you mentioned injuries. It, no, not a real big training staff for either side. So if they do get hurt, there's not a lot that can be done about it here. And there's a short kick, and it's picked up at the 24. Takes out to the 30. He's going to run up the middle and break a few tackles and get to the outside. He's at the 40, and he gets, he gets finally gets tripped up and drugged down by the kicker, and he's going to get dropped all the way up to the 44-yard line. Evans, Evans, the running back, got him deep on the kickoff, just trying to get the uh, the most player, the explosive the players the ball in their hands as frequent as they can. A good return by the Jaguars. They will start it at first and 10 at their own 44-yard line. So, you know, if they're going to have a chance in this game, Bobby, the fact that they've had pretty good field position to start their drive is really helping, except for that last one where they threw a pick. Uh, they have, they've had some pretty good success with the run, and then they have some unsuccess, unsuccessful drives with the pass, so I would suggest they stick with the run here. Well, twice they've been inside the red zone, came with no points, and you're just not going to win football games if you don't score. So we're going to have a halfback toss pass, and he's wide open, and he drops it. Drops a halfback toss pass from about the 30 yard line. He caught the pass and dropped it all the way deep inside the 30, but there is a flag on the play. So it may have been irrelevant if he would have caught that because it was right in the area of holding. And that was Bryant. He's going to be, you know, backing up at quarterback, but he also plays receiver. And he's pretty dangerous with the ball in his hands as well. He tried to do a little razzle-dazzle, maybe get the uh, spark, get their kids fired up. It was a great play call. The man was wide open, no one even close. And they are marking the ball off. It looks like it was a holding penalty. They are going to move back with a little bit over three minutes to go in the first quarter. 7 nothing here. Jaguars being moved. Was it a, it looks to be about a five-yard penalty. Yeah, it was yeah. about a five-yard penalty. It looks like it was a... Uh, a uh, it, procedure penalty. Illegal procedure. I think there is no official with a white hat on tonight, and I did not get an indication, so we'll have to be guessing at penalties, I think, all night long. And there's the handoff. It's a pitch back to the running back. He breaks through. He's going to go upfield and get hammered, not quite getting back to the original line of scrimmage. He faked the pass as he's coming <laughs> towards a couple Mavericks, maybe hoping that they'll uh, break down and get yeah. nervous. But Jump up in the air. Yeah, I don't think he had any receivers in pattern downfield, so it was just a, a fake for sure. Some personnel change for the Mavericks on defense. Mavericks running a 3-4 defense tonight, but I'm sure they'll be, they'll be switching things up as it goes. The different personnel that they can work with is kind of limited, so may have to make a few adjustments and see what they can do. In fact, it looks like they're going to come out with four defensive linemen now, so they're mixing it up defensively. And there is. He's looking downfield for the pass. He throws. He goes deep. He's wide open, and it is caught. All the way down to the 31-yard line. They're going to spot it at the 30, inside the 30. 26-yard gain on the play. Nice pitch and catch by the Jaguars. The quarterback dropped back, stood in the pocket. Pressure came in and released the ball. Wide receiver uh, looked like they might have been playing zone coverage on that play. And the defense kind of got caught sleeping. He snuck behind the defensive back, got caught wide open. If you'd have hit him in stride, he might have taken it for six. But he was more... More involved with the possession. He caught it, drop, bro, dropped it down. It was a huge gain. There's a handoff up the middle. A few broken tackles. He slides down for about a nine-yard gain. They're going to give Nate on the play, making it second and two. So just like that, the Jaguars are back in business. 
inside, deep inside UT Maverick uh, uh, territory with a little bit under two minutes to go. See if they can punch one in here before the beginning of the second quarter. Almost the entire first quarter has been played in Maverick territory, and while they do have the lead, that's not a way you want to play the game all night long. It's very risky. You're hoping that your that your offense can just out of nowhere score a touchdown for you quick. And we have the same formation. And it's a handoff to the fullback, and he's going to go up the middle, spin around, break a few tackles, and pick up about three and a half, four yards, and they're going to give him a first down. And so the uh, Jaguars, South Alabama, moving inside the red zone again. For the second time tonight, Mark picking up a Bruce. first down, spotting them at the 19. And if they play their cards right, they might be able to get one or two more first downs before they get into that end zone. I'm sure the coaching staff for Alabama and the, the, the Jaguars would like to get in on one play. <laughs> Even things up here as they're down by a touchdown with a, just a little bit over a minute to go. Not in that all that big of a rush, so they may just try and get close and then swap ends of the field here. And there is a pitch back for the running back. He breaks in through the, a few tackles, squirts to the outside, and finally gets drugged down. And the whistle's blown, but not before he picks up. About six on the play. Another the six or seven. Do have yards. a flag down about the 20 in the area of a holding penalty. We will wait for the official call here in just a moment. The, uh, the referees are huddling. And they're calling a face mask. A personal foul face mask against the Mavericks, which will march them even closer to the end zone. Looks like it's going to be half the distance. And the ball is right now is spotted at the 18, and they will probably mark. Let's see how many yards they give them. They did mark it as a personal foul. And they are only giving them five yards, so that will put them all the way down at the 11. So they are as close to the... Uh, as Paters, they've been all night tonight, Bobby. Yeah, that's going to be a half the distance to the uh, to the goal line penalty right there. And, you know, once again, it puts them in business. Now the first down marker hasn't moved, however. And they're just two yards short of first down. But I think with a personal foul, yeah, with personal foul, that's going to bring up an automatic first down. So the chains will move. They will be able to pick up a first down if they get inside the one. Right down so to the one, yeah. Potentially they have eight downs in front of them here if they so choose, but they can get a first down. Yeah. Well, if I'm a team of about 24 players, I'm going to score on one play. I don't want to drag it out to eight players. Quarterback throws it back to a screen. He catches it, jumps to the inside, but they're going to call it incomplete. It bounced off the turf. He had the personnel set up. He might have picked up, gotten back to the line of scrimmage and picked up two or three yards, but the defense was there for that screen, but it was dropped incomplete. And that is going to make it second and 10. It looks like they're just trying to get the ball to Evans in space, let him make a couple Mavericks miss if he can, and not try to go through the middle of that Mavericks defense. And here we go. They're going to come up standing at their uh, the ball line of scrimmage on the 11-yard line. Same formation, full back in front of the running back. And he drops back. He's going to roll out to his left, look inside the end zone. No one there. He's going to scoot himself and get hammered right at the line of scrimmage. Just absolutely hit hard. And that is Jacob I again, number 60. Jacob I, number 60 on the tackle. And that is going to bring up third and about an, almost the full 10 yards. Look, they're not going to give him any yards on that play. He rolled up to his left there, Bobby. He had two wide receivers. He had one deep in the corner of the end zone and a tight end kind of floating around about the six or seven oh, no, yard line. And there was just nobody there. It was totally covered perfectly. So he rolled out and just tried to get scooted on the sideline, got hammered. And that is the end of the first quarter here at Maverick Stadium. The score is seven to nothing. And we are going to go live to the sideline right now for a sideline report with Jessica Trover. Jessica? I'm here with the wife of J.R. Honeycutt, Amy. How long have you guys been together? Uh, we've been married for a year, January 13th. Awesome. And 13 is y'all lucky number? Yeah, that's both our lucky numbers. And that's Pierce's number as well. Um, what does he play? What position is he playing? What does he do to help out with the team? Um, he's the offensive coordinator and the quarterback, just for one play. Yeah, and how do you feel about him playing? Not too thrilled about it, but hopefully he'll get out of his system with this one game. <laughs> how long has he been playing football, and what does he want to do with football? Uh, he's been playing since junior high. And he really likes to coach. And you go to UTA. What are you majoring in? Psychology. Um, well, back to you guys, Dad and Tim. 
Thank you, Jessica, for that silent report. We will have to notify Jessica that Tim is doing the the play announcing tonight public for the address. game. The public address announcing tonight for the game. And we just met a wife of one of the players, which is a little out of the ordinary from what we normally do. We normally are calling a high school game, so it's weird to hear that we had a, a, a wife hoping that his uh, her husband that's playing will not get hurt on the one play that he's playing. Uh, we are going to start the second quarter here deep in Maverick territory. It is going to be third and 10 from the 11-yard line. And they line up with two running backs and two wide receivers split far to the left. He drops back. Throws it quick to the outside. He jukes to the inside, breaks a few tackles, gets drugged down, and finally gets down at about the five-yard line. Well, we had an early penalty flag as the play was still going on, and then a late penalty flag, most likely a, a personal foul or unsportsmanlike conduct as, a late as, hit. as the play ended, late hit. So it'll be some sort of personal foul. Not good for the Mavericks when you finally stop and hold them out of the end zone, going to make it fourth and five make that fourth and four from the five yard line and just as the player was tackled and he was down uh maverick came out of nowhere and dove on the pile so it'll be interesting to see with the the earlier penalty if these are going to offset or if that's a personal foul and it is accepted it's going to be an automatic first down you know at the two and a half yard line when they they mark it from the spot of the foul and give them half the distance it will be half the distance and even if they don't give them the automatic first down you're only a yard and a half away from a first down and uh, the mavericks have shown no sign of stopping the run so as the Jaguars are down, you would definitely want to go for it. Yeah, they're going to replay the down. We had a personal foul against the Mavericks and a chop block against. against the Jaguars. So we'll, re we'll redo it. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the Mavericks. So, yeah, that's going to redo it. Third down and long again here. They can get a first down just inside the one-yard line. But I, uh, as we've seen the Jaguars go to the air a number of times here on this drive, and I, I think they're probably going to go to that well again. Well, you know the Jaguars want to score because you don't know what their kicking game is capable of doing tonight. Not something you want to try and force your team into as he is split to the far right, almost out of bounds. So look for the, uh, he drops back and he's going to throw inside and it's caught and dropped. An incomplete pass, going to make it fourth down. He tried to hit the wide receiver on the post route, coming in Jonathan far away from the, uh, the rest of the team. And he got there right about the same time as the ball did. So good defensive play by number 30 for the Mavericks. That was Jonathan Johnson again. Jaguars trying to split out the, uh, the receiver number five, Brian, as wide as possible to get that corner lined up in front of him and hope that the safety is going to be worried about the run and then run that slant or post pattern into the middle of the field and hope the safety can't get over in time to get in front of the receiver and that the cornerback's going to be you know, pushed off back worrying about that fade route. Exactly. And they're going for it on this one. He's going to drop back and look downfield, and he's going to throw it up in the air, and it is going to be tipped away. Through the hands of number 24, Brandon Sanders of the Mavericks, and that'll turn the ball over on downs. Another incomplete pass. Kind of hard to feather in a pass right there uh, where he, he tried to float it in between about six people. It's one of those guys. And the Mavericks offense is going to be back on the field deep in their own territory at about the... Um, about the 11-yard line, and here come the Jaguars as both teams, offensive and defensive teams for the Jaguars, slowly moving on and off the field. So they're already feeling a little bit of fatigue, and it's just now the beginning of the second quarter. That's three times now that South Alabama has been inside the 20-yard line, and they've come up with zero points. It makes you wonder what they would be trying to do on the offense if they had their field goal kicker here tonight. They might be up six to nothing. They might be up 14 to nothing. You never know. Is that timeout? Timeout called by the Mavericks. I believe UTA called a timeout. So yeah, it does look like the fatigue is already setting in for the Jaguars. Rough when you've got you know two thirds of your players that you're used to having here tonight. I'm sure we've got a bunch of guys on their team that are playing different positions than they normally would. So it's just never an easy situation to come come overcome. Well, if you're listening to the game and you're watching the game and you don't see what we see, it's a pretty thin sideline for the Jaguars, really thin. But they're not playing like it's thin, though. They're playing like they're they're fresh. They're, they're really playing with a lot of heart right now. They, it is only 7 to nothing against a team that's got you doubled up as far as uh, manpower. 
And they have, and their running game is really, ma the Mavericks have not stopped the running game tonight. And don't forget the coach for the Jaguars is on the field calling plays and he'll be playing both ways most of the night tonight and taking a little bit of a breather, but we make the handoff up the middle to number 23, Frisk. And we got a little bit, a bit of a poor exchange. Mavericks able to recover. Defensive line swarming on the play on that. Uh, fake handoff to the right of play action. The quarterback just gets hammered to the right of the line, and that's going to be a loss of about four yards. So the Mavericks going backwards in a part of the field you don't want to go backwards on. Not that there is a part anywhere you want to go backwards on. Mavericks line up. They are set at about their own seven-yard line. Spread out offense, a close pullback, deep running back sitting at his goal line. And he's going to hand off to his pullback. He's going to go up the middle and finally drag a few defenders down with him, but not before he gets all the way up to about the 17-yard line. And he's going to pick up about 12 or 13 yards. Yeah, that's his fourth carry tonight. Now 35 yards by far. The best, best thing they've got going right now is Rose up the middle on the quick handoff to the fullback. Well, there's just he's such a powerful runner. By the time the defense realizes he's got the ball and they go to pursue, he's already in the linebacking core and it's hard to pick him up. And it's a direct handoff to the quarterback, takes a snap, hands it off to his running back, and he is gonna try and get the first down and they are going to mark him. It's very close. They may even have to come in and measure on this play. And there's some flags, some extracurricular activity on the field. You saw a lot of people meet in the middle trying to fight for that first down. Defenders trying to fight to force him to not get it. And we may see another personal foul go here. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the defense and against the offense. Offsetting penalties on sportsmanlike. It's a little sloppy there by both teams. The play stands, it's gonna be still third and short. Looks like they may have lost about a yard on the play. He looks like, well, from where they got the ball marked, it's just a little, it's right in between the 13 and 14 yard line and the ball is marked right at the 20, I'm sorry, the, the first down chain is right at about the 21 and a half yard line and they marked it right at the 21. Mavericks desperately needing a first down here to get themselves further out of their own territory. Now the Mavericks backing up and they're re- I think they're going to mark off a foul against the Jaguars here. No? It, it looks like they're, oh, they're coming in for a measurement. And uh, you know what? It was a penalty on the Jaguars, but the uh, the Mavericks want a measurement first to see if they want to accept or decline it. Because they may be closer to the first down without the penalty than if they were to take it. Fourth down. It is fourth down by just inches and they are going to they're going to wave off the penalty and the, the Mavericks are going to try and go for it deep in their own territory kind of a risk here although they've stopped the Jaguars three times inside their own 20 so giving them the ball here at the 21 yard line I don't think you know, really nervous about that. Well, there is one player that the Jaguars have not been able to stop tonight, so they may end up going to him again. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Rose right up the middle again. I think he's gained yards every time he's touched it, and the least he's gotten on each play has been about three yards. So, yeah, I definitely see him going to Rose up the middle. And sure enough, it was. Jaguars ready for it. Oh, and they just hammer him. And he's not, for the first time tonight, the Jaguars stop Rose on fourth and about six inches, and they lose about three yards on the play. So the Jaguars offense comes onto the field. Number 42, Jason Actually, about Jaguars four or five defense. people switch out, and the other four, the other four or five stay First on the field. And, for the Jaguars, turnover on down. and that's a big stop by number 98, Ada Hallway. Ada Hallway found Samoan. That's a big man. Ada Hallway. T tackle made by number 98, Ada Hallway. He was so hungry, he... Ada Hallway. And here we go. Maverick switching personnel on defense, bringing a few people off. So 
little bit of confusion of who's going to be on the field for this play. There are nine men on the field for the Mavericks. There are ten. They're man, they're man short right now. They're bringing an extra defensive lineman or linebacker. Put them right at the nose tackle position. And they're going to start the ball right at the 20-yard line. So just like that, they're almost in they are in the red zone to start their offensive drive. Hit the pitch back to the running back. It's Bobble. He's caught it, and he's going to throw it downfield. Tipped, almost intercepted. Number 60 of the Mavericks, Jacob Ayer, gets uh, gets a hand on the ball and tips it back, almost picked off by one of his teammates. There were two. It looks like two people might have got their fingers in on that play. At least that's the third time we've seen that halfback try and throw that pass. If there's anything they want to do to try and open up the offense and try and spread out the Maverick defense, Jared nothing Beck, better than a halfback toss pass to spread out your defense. defense. And both times, I think he had a receiver down if he'd put it in the corner of the end zone. He had a man underneath him in coverage, but no one behind him. So if he could have put it, throwing on the run, rolling to your right is not an easy thing to do, especially for a running back who probably doesn't get a lot of action throwing passes during practice. A running back that's under six foot tall. And that's the third time that they've missed that, that wide open pass. There's a run up the middle for a gain of about six yards. He's going to set up a third and about five with about 12 and a half minutes to go in the second quarter here at Maverick Stadium Steve in uh, Arlington, Texas. Jaguars down by a touchdown, seven up the Mavericks. Five yards brings up third. And they are, it looks like, you know, I wouldn't be surprised here just because of the field position the Jaguars have had. You know, the Mavericks may be a little winded on defense too. Well, the Mavericks, one th good thing, they, the previous two games have been shut out by Texas State and Trinity, so this is nice for them to get a score early on. And that is another run. It's going to set up fourth down, and we picked up about three. Fourth and two now. They've got a decision to make. We've already seen their field goal kicker get one block. He's not their usual kicker. We've seen them twice in, in the red zone miss it on fourth down. So it's three other times they've they missed on, the on uh, down in fourth down in, in inside the 20-yard line. And they bring in the big meat. And look, there's going to be a timeout. Jaguar. Timeout, South Alabama. Their first time out of the half. 11.40 left here to play UTA Maverick Field on the campus of the University of Texas at Arlington. Well, we mentioned earlier South Alabama had some trouble getting on their buses and getting here, and you know, they, it's hard traveling as a club football team and drawing a good fan base. They've only got a couple, I think, families that uh, followed them out here on their sideline. That's an interesting story that you bring up, Bobby. The family that's over there that travel with him, from what I heard from the coaching staff, these guys feed these players. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if it's a Division One, Two, Three, NAI, NBCAA, or club. When you're feeding a bunch of guys that are playing football, that can get pricey. And they said they have been faithful to these guys every away game and home game they've had. And that's just awesome that the family would go ahead and do that and then pony up that cash and then help out and any way they can with, with their son's you know, efforts to try and continue playing football for quite a, you know, as long as he can. And Southern, Southern Alabama is going to come in. <coughs> Excuse me. Here come the Jaguars. 11.40 to go. It's a 13, it's a handoff right up the middle. He's gonna break a few tackles and get drugged down inside the 10 at about the nine yard line, and that is going to move the chains, giving them first and goal. Yeah, just inside the nine, and they had this situation on their last drive, it came out with no points. So it'll be interesting to see, they, they've, as you said earlier, they've been running the ball quite successfully, but they keep trying to go to the air, and that's when their problem is, uh, is having a little, a little trouble. That's when they, when they go to the air, they've only completed one pass tonight, and they've, they've you know, thrown the ball, I think, eight times with one completion. So it'll be interesting to see if they just give it four runs here try and follow their, uh, their big offensive lineman down to the goal line. And there's the direct hand up up the middle of the running back, and he is going to scoot forward for about three, two and a half, three yards maybe. Some yellow laundry on the, the far side of the field. So interesting to see if it's an offsides or false start penalty, but we do have a, uh, a penalty flag down right at the line of scrimmage. Looks like the Jaguars being talking to, so my guess is it's an offsides if the Jaguars are going to tell them if they accept it or deny it. Find it. 
And it is against the Mavericks. Offside, as the defense, ball will be marked the inside the five yard line. So it made a little difference as far as the run goes. The run took them down to about the four. The, the penalty would take them just inside the five. And that'll give them an automatic first down here. And same formation as before. Mavericks load up the box with nine players. Here's the handoff. He's going to break up the middle and get drugged down, spun, and knocked down for a gain of about one, putting them at the three-yard line, making Evans it third, or I believe second and goal. Octavius yeah, they just Ellis. tried to, Mavericks, as you said, put loaded the box, so as uh, Evans got the handoff, he tried to cut wide right, but the Mavericks prepared for that, and he had to cut it back inside, just nothing doing up there in the middle of the field. Good tackle by the defensive back for the Mavericks on the far left side. Jaguars line up to the ball. Same formation. Look for this quick pass to the inside of the slot. Then they try and run that post again. No, no, it's a handoff right up the middle. He pushes his way into the end zone. He falls right at the goal line. And we are waiting for a signal to see what they give us. Yeah, Evans says he's falling down, reached the ball out, and he's going to be really close, but they're going to mark him down short. Looks like his knee may have touched before he was able to reach the ball across. That'll bring up third and inches. And there's a player down, number 22 again. Looks like he lost his shoe. Maybe that's the second time we've seen him down as for his shoe, not an injury. And in comes number 36 for the Mavericks on defense. They line up and look for the quarterback sneak, the quick strike, quick snap. And he pushes his way into the end zone. Touchdown. And that is a touchdown for Crabtree. The Jaguars. Yeah, Crabtree just took the snap and forward Missouri. It looks like he may have fumbled the ball. And uh, the offensive lineman oh, recovered five. 15. Adam Hicks recovered in the end zone. He was the one that walked away with the ball. I think it was just going to be a quarterback sneak, but it may have been fumbled. And he picked it up before uh, the Mavericks realized what was going on. There is a six foot, 338 pound offensive lineman for the South Alabama Jaguars. That's a big Jaguar. Chris Taylor into attempt the point after touchdown. And this time he's gonna get it up and it is gonna be good. Tie ball game, 7-7 here. 9-15 to go here at Maverick Price Stadium here at UCA in Arlington, Texas. To go so an outman South Alabama Jaguar team, and when I say outmanned, I mean like 40 to 20. Outman team coming here and fighting strong on defense. And this time they finally came away with some points and they stuck to the run as we've been we've been talking all night long of trying to, you know, they keep going to the pass and maybe that's just not the the best thing for them and the run very successful there once they they took over the ball as the Mavericks went for it themselves on fourth down in their side, deep inside their own territory. Well, it doesn't really, doesn't hurt your cause when you, uh, your defense stuffs the offense inside their own 30 yard line. And they are making personnel switches and player changes for the kickoff team for the Mavericks. As they bring their team on the field, they will have three players playing deep at their 15, 20 yard line. Now this is gonna be the first time we've seen South Alabama kick and we know that their usual kicker not in Chris Taylor, just filling in for him. So I wouldn't be surprised if they come away with a little pooch kick or even an onside kick right now as the Mavericks did to them to open the game just because Taylor not used to kicking it deep. Or just a kick right down the middle. Yeah, and it is a kick right down the middle. It's caught at the 22, he's at the 25, he's up to the 30, breaks through tackles, runs by his blockers, breaks it again, he's wide open, he's up to the 50, he's at 45 to 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, five, touchdown, Mavericks. Jonathan Johnson, reception for It's about an 80 yard kick return for a touchdown, the Mavericks surrendering the lead and taking it right back. Catching the ball at the 20, 21 yard line, Running up, getting about the 35 to the, about the 30, 35 yard line, and squeaks through, gets in front of his def uh, his blockers, and kind of surprised the Jaguars. Like he was right there, and he's like, "Wow, he's already here," and they made a couple hits, and, and instead of like trying to juke his way left to right, he kind of just scooted forward, 
got tripped up, got his feet together, and just used his wheels to break to the outside and return it all the way for a touchdown. And pending the extra point, it will be 14 to seven with about nine minutes to go here in the second quarter. Daniel Phillips into attempt that PAT. Holding for him, Jaron Begg. Kick is up, and it is good. So a well fought drive for the Jaguars turns into a single kickoff. It makes you wonder, you know, now, if it's a kicking game, should the ball have been deeper? Should, you know, are they gonna try and do this? So we're gonna see this anymore tonight. We're gonna see them try and kick deep to a three-man set. You know, after a kickoff like that, it makes you just wanting to kick it out of bounds and take it with your deep point as well as they are. Or a pooch kick it or kick a grounder. Yeah, I think you gotta kick it low and away, give you know, make it bounce, make you know the UTA players have to move and shift to get over to it. The other thing that does is when the ball bounces and may go a different direction, your blockers don't know if you're going to be on the left or the right-hand side and which way you're coming. It really screws up anything the kick return team might have set up and can allow your kick coverage team to get down and get on the right side of those blocks and uh, make the tackle. Nice return by Jonathan. I believe it was uh, Jonathan Johnson, number 30, having an outstanding game so far. A near pick in the end zone, a couple block passes, a, a couple uh, tackles, an interception return, and a kickoff return for a touchdown. The Mavericks lined up for the kickoff. Two men deep for the Jaguars at about the 19 and the 20 yard line. And here comes the kick, and the kick is off, and it is high and down the center of the field, bounced, picked up at about the 25. He's up to the 30 himself. Goes to the outside, turns the corner, 35, and knocked out of bounds right at the 39-yard right. line with a flag on the field, right in the middle of the field at about the 35-yard line. Yeah, late flag came in on the play from the back official. So it's got to be, I'm thinking, some kind of block blocking the penalty, the and that's gonna it's going to bring the ball back down. And the, the foul should occur from the spot of that foul. And if the flag is uh, true, supposed to throw it. the officials are supposed to throw it where the, uh, the penalty of cold, and we've got a holding against South Alabama, so that will move Holden it back to probably down to the 30 yard line. University of South Alabama. And a good return negated by a hold completely on the other side of the, the field from the play. A little bit under nine minutes to go here in the second quarter. 14 to seven. Mavericks here at UTA. The Jaguars coming into the game with quite a drive on little or no rest at all with a small team, with unmanned the team. With them holding in yards. right now, uh, Bobby, they're First really down hanging down. in there. I'm uh, really surprised to see how close this game still is. Even before halftime, I thought it was gonna be out of reach for the Jaguars as they line up under the center. He drops back and pitches out to his running back. He's gonna break out and fake the throw, breaks up the middle, passes the blocker, and gets knocked out of bounds after about a seven yard gain. So a pretty good fake halfback toss pass. And he tucks and runs and ends up about seven. Yeah, the running game didn't really affect it tonight for South Alabama. It's when they started passing that they've, they've slowed themselves down and shot themselves in the foot. And I think the uh, the player coach that they have out there, Chad Reeves, has seen that and made the adjustment to stick to the ground game as much as he can unless they get into a precarious third and long situation. Player, coach. I mean, I saw it all the time in baseball. I never saw it in football. No, not Although yet. I think Mike Ditka could have done it a couple times. Ditka. And here is the uh, player, the, the quarterback under the snap, direct handoff to his fullback, break the tackle, jumps to the outside, gets hit, breaks another tackle, and gets lifted and knocked around in a circle. But not before he gets pretty close to a first down. He's going to be just a little bit short, make it third in inches. Well, we're talking about the Brandon coach Sanders slash player. He actually, you know, helped found the third South Alabama short. Football Club and played three years. And in his third year, he was a player coach. And then he's been the head coach the last two years. And because the team is so undermanned, he's going to help them out tonight and playing a little football for them. Just because, as we've mentioned so many times, they are undermanned and just not a lot of bodies to uh, to play positions. So he's just trying to help out the team any way he can. He's been on this team for, you know, or been associated with this program for so many years. He's very familiar with the uh, Playbook. Well, he is he is the uh, the coach, and he is a player, and it is a club team, so he is allowed to do that. And it's a fake handoff. The quarterback sneaking up the middle, trying to pick up inches, picks up about seven yards. One of the best quarterback sneaks I've ever seen. Of seven on the play. 
That is a huge quarterback sneak, and they are all the way out to about the 43-yard line. The Jaguars again with the run. You know, not a very big defensive line for the Mavericks and not a very big def offensive line for the Jaguars, but I guess the lighter the defensive line, the little easier it is to run. Not as many big bodies to try and get by. Uh, they are, they're really, they've got to be averaging 45 yards at least a carry or an attempt on the offense here as they line up in the shotgun formation. Uh, uh, formation has been very successful. He drops back, rolls up to his right, fakes the pitch, goes outside, breaks a few tackles, gets drugged down from behind. Look like a little bit of horse collar tackle there. Looks like uh, Crabtree's gonna be okay. He's gonna get about five on the play, but yeah, the, the running game just continues to work for South Alabama here as they're trying to, to come back and answer that kickoff return touchdown by Jonathan Johnson. I really think because of the passing plays that they do have, I really think the coach is trying to draw this this team for the Mavericks, trying to draw them up on the line and you know enough to run the ball consistently enough to where they draw them so close to get seven or eight guys in the box and pop one over the middle. And they are in the shotgun formation again, so giving them the option of the throw and the quarterback keeper. They do have seven men in the box. And at the high snap, with the reverse of the wide receiver, he breaks the outside, goes to the far side of the field, breaks the Dukes of man, goes to the inside, moves around, gets inside uh, Maverick territory, gets drugged down at about the 46-yard line for a first down. Yeah, that was Swinson on the carry, and, you know, they just do a little razzle-dazzle, look like they're on the option to the left-hand side, send your receiver coming back. Once you get that defense Swinson all going to their right, the and you bring in your quick wide first receiver running, you know, yeah, I'm sorry, they're, yeah, they're going to their right, the offense is moving to their left, and you get the, uh, the change of direction. It's so hard to reverse field when somebody else is already running full speed. And he was able to get the corner and get forward north-south enough to gain the first down. Absolutely, making it first and 10. Five minutes and 35 seconds to go in the second quarter. Jaguars charging down the field. The snap, he drops back, hands it off, runs up the middle, breaks a few tackles up the middle, down to the third, out through the 35, all the way down to the 31-yard line. So they have found something in the middle of this line that is giving them great penetration and they are moving the ball at will through the middle of this defense. 15 yard gain there you for Evans in the running game, you know, <laughs> just continuing to, to decimate this Maverick Club football team defense. Unable to come up with an answer right now. They're giving the ball to the fullback, the quarterback, the running back receivers, they're, you know, they're spreading it out, but it's just all been on the ground on this drive. Definitely got some momentum and losing 14 to seven, looking desperately for some momentum. They are inside Maverick territory at the 31, the handoff, and it's thrown to the outside, and he's going to squeak through, and they're not before he picks up another four yards. Evans, yeah, just squirting to the right-hand side, trying to get to the outside and uh, use his speed. But, you know, I think the other thing, limit the number of possessions the Mavericks get. If the Jaguars can do that, it's going to be, you know, a much more lower-scoring game, and they got a chance with a small roster. You don't want it to become a shootout where you're running up and down the field if you can avoid that. Well, they got this ball. This this drive, as there's a timeout on the field, this drive started with nine minutes on the clock, and as tired as they are, they are drawing out a long, drawn-out offensive drive uh, with the running game, wearing down the defense of the Mavericks. Even though they're down 14 to seven, they're taking almost this entire second quarter to move the ball down the field. Yeah, with no passing completions, and they've been running mainly through the middle of the field. Nobody's been stepping out of bounds. It's been easy to keep, keep this clock going, and as I said, that's going to limit the number of possessions for the, the Maverick Football Club and South Alabama and just keep it a, a lower scoring game, and I think that'll help South Alabama stay in it and keep their guys fresher if, if the game, you know, if, if you've got 10 possessions versus 15 possessions, you know, you're not going to be running nearly as many plays and exerting as much energy. Well, look at it this way. It just makes sense. I mean, you, like what you're saying, your offense is made to run. Your defense is made to stop. All right, and you got your defense on the field. You come in here with a team that's got twice as many players as you that runs a better offense than they do as defense. How much sense does that make to keep their offense that's made to run on the field and your very thin ice defense on the field, giving them every opportunity to wear you down? I mean, this is just great strategy for, for not necessarily play calling or just the game strategy. We're going to put our offense on the field, have nothing but running, and really draw out this clock, giving their offense no chance. It's like the anti Peyton Manning uh, spray. Keep him off the field. That's how you beat the Colts. Keep this Maverick offense off the field. That's how you beat the Mavericks, and that's what they're doing, even though they're losing. 
There's the pitch back to the running back. He's going to go down to the near side, break it, go to the inside, shoot through, and get drugged down for another first down as he gets all the way to the 20, about the 21 yard line. And they, uh, they're moving the chains. It's, it's already a done deal. It's a first well, down. Gabriel. Another first down in the running game, just having their way tonight. Yeah, and the clock continues to uh, to roll after they set the chains. And you know, as as we've been saying, just keep the ball on the ground, keep the clock running. And you know, UTA hasn't shown much of a chance first of stopping this running attack. The Once they've gotten it going, looks like the South Alabama's running downhill right now. You got an offensive line that consists. After this play, we'll run you by some numbers real quick. And the quarterback under the center snaps the ball, steps back, hands it to his fullback, and he goes up the middle and drags a few UTA players. Not before he picks up another four yards. You said it perfectly. He dragged a couple. He was hit at about the line of scrimmage and just kept going, churning his legs. He was able to get you know, about seven on the, on the play. And, uh, you know, you got to think as, as these players, if they're hit at the line and just fell forward, you're going to get two yards. And these guys are getting about two or three yards and then falling forward. So that, that right there is success in itself. And you got an offensive line at 6'4", 240, 5'11", 235, 6'2", 228, 6'2", 255, and 6'3", 38, and a tight end at 6'1", 190. So you've got a lot more weight on the offensive line as UT does on defense as he drops back for the option, throws the option out of bounds, it's picked up and bobbled, and he's hit and dropped. So the first defensive stand for the Mavericks comes on a bad pitch that's picked up by the Jaguars and then bobbled Steve and dropped Swanson back for a loss of about three yards. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is with this Jaguar team. Once they get inside Steve the 20, Swanson. they just seem to, to shut down almost. They, they got some points last time, but here they are, and they you know they got inside the 20 all the way down to the 15. Well, it seems like once they get inside the end of the red zone, they all of a sudden start changing their game plan. You know, this is why would you go what you say it all the time, don't go away from what is working Although it is different when you get inside the red zone and they start bringing personnel in to stop that particular play. Even then, they haven't shown signs of stopping it. Yeah, you gotta go with what got you there. You got twins to the right, single to the left, twins to the left, one offset to the left. He drops back in shotgun formation. He's being chased out of the pocket, throws down field, caught unknown, uncovered, all the way down to the five yard line. First and goal from the five, and, uh, another first down for the Jaguars. That is number 22. They're all-purpose running back. The throw was made. He was wide open, unmanned, uncovered at the 10, caught it, and fell down to the 5. Yeah, he was just able to come out of the backfield and get wide open. The, the corners and safeties drop back, covering the receivers and the tight ends on the, uh, the initial patterns. And uh, as you said, wide open, just nobody near him as, until the ball was in the air. And now they take over first and 5. Two DBs, two safeties. First one wide receiver, one running back. There's one man that's uncovered out there somewhere. Under center, he drops back and snaps. The ball gets forced out of the pocket, running for his life, and just gets hammered at about the eight-yard line for a loss of three yards. Nobody open for the Jaguars. Crabtree looking for anybody, no one there but Number Blue three, Jersey. Bags, and just before he gets out of bounds, he just got sandwiched at the 10-yard line and falls forward. Yeah, it looked like his, his wide receiver out to the right-hand side where he rolled to wasn't even out in a pattern, just didn't fire off the ball. And as uh, Crabtree kept Second going to the right, the finally nine. decided to go out. But at that point, Crabtree already had a man on him and just unable to muscle up a throw. You got to come back forward when you see him in trouble. You got to get into a position that's close for him to make a quick repair on the play. And it is going to be second and goal. It's a pitch to the right. Cut back up in the middle. He splits a few defenders and gets hit, not before picking up a yard. And we're going to see. Looks like I, is it, uh, I believe it is third down. Third and about third and goal. From the seven yard line. The Jaguars are going to take a timeout now, just 111 remaining. I got to assume they're in fourth down territory just with the problems they've had kicking already tonight. But yeah, 111, they've done a great job. As you said, the drive started 901 on the clock. So eight or 750 already taken off the time. Oh, the drive approaching Jaguars. eight minutes. And uh, that's what you want to do and, and just wear down this UTA defense because, you know, playing defense is a lot more tiring than playing offense. On offense, you know the play, the offensive line. They fire out their blocks. They don't have to, you know, you stay with them for a few seconds. But as the play moves downfield, the defense has to go chase. The offense doesn't necessarily have to. You know, you've got players on the field. The defense is chasing to the ball every single time. And it just, you know, it's much more tiring. That's why, you know, you always talk about defense being on the field and time possession is such a key factor in games. Defensive line, if they're trying to get to the quarterback, whatever, such more uh, energy being exerted 
uh, on defense. So this is a great, great strategy, game strategy, as you mentioned earlier, for South Alabama. Well, what makes this more, uh, even more amazing, uh, Bobby, is the fact that when we say this is keeping their defense off the field, not really, it isn't, because <laughs> half of them are on the offense. Yeah, but it's much more tiring to play defense and try and chase down running backs than it is to play offense. Absolutely. So I think they, they, you know, South Alabama much, much more pleased with their offense and been able to do this. And they have spread out the defense, and you have got a wide receiver far to the right, one far to the left, single in the backfield, and there's the quarterback. He drops back, rolls out to his left. He's going to throw into the end zone, and it is incomplete. Looks like he might have had it, but the referees were right there on it, and they waved it incomplete. And we are looking at fourth and goal. Yeah, Steve Swanson providing the coverage on the play, I believe. And uh, he was just able to get a hand in there and tip it away, keeping it and uh, knocking it to the turf before it can get to the receiver. Clock running with 54 seconds to go. So we've seen two called passes here, or three called passes, I believe, in a row, and uh, not a whole lot of success. And they are persistent as they are going to try for the field goal from the right hash mark. Ball at about the seven yard line, gonna make this about about a 21, 22 yard field goal. You just wanna make sure they come over with some points here before the half, just 54 seconds left. There's the kick, it is up, and it is no good. Wide to the left. That's not, you know, a missed field goal and one Score wide to the left. 14, they got the PAT on their touchdown. They did a great job of controlling the, the clock there in the second quarter. Unable to come away with any points. I gotta think UCA here backed up at uh, the 20 yard line and where they will take over. It's gonna be tough to get a drive together, just 49 seconds left. Wouldn't be surprised they just take a knee here instead of, you know, trying to throw the ball down the, down the field and giving up a costly turnover Although interception. Although the uh, Jaguars not showing any sign of anything, any kind of deep threat. What do you think about the idea of uh, half the defense out there had just got done doing a nine minute drive what do you think about, uh, as, as there's a timeout called, you know, trying to throw one deep, trying to catch them sleeping? Well, I think you've got a 14-7 lead, and I'd rather protect that lead. You just, you've stopped them now four times since they've been inside your red zone. So offensively, yes, they've just put, to great, put together a great drive, but throughout the first half, you know, that's one drive out of five that they've actually, you know, converted on. That's not good, I guess, if you're the Maverick defense, but yes, it's good they only have seven points, but no, it's not good that they've been inside your red zone four times. No, well, a couple, a couple, you know, turnovers and different things have, have given them that field position, but UTA's offense has been able to rest, and uh, I just think you've got to protect your lead here. A couple weeks ago, I was doing a high school game where, where a team was trying to score with a few seconds left in the first half. They threw an interception that was returned for a touchdown. It went from being up 10 to seven to being down 14 to 10. I just don't think UTA wants to get in that uh, kind of situation here tonight. It would be smart just to take a knee or two. They'd have to take two of them in this position, so they might want to just. Run the ball with their big healthy fullback right up the middle for a few yards and then take it down and then take it into the halftime and trying to put together another good effort in the second half. We haven't seen a lot of the uh, the aerial attack from UTA tonight, so it'll be interesting to see if they try anything here. And it is handed off and it's to the near side. He turns the corner, breaks two tackles, and just gets hammered and drugged down. Finally dragging himself forward. That was Brandon Sanders. I'm not sure if he's related to Barry Sanders, but uh, he's wearing the blue just like After that Barry. cut right there to the left, I'm going to say no. Relations are All right, well, uh, play clock has not started yet, and if it hasn't, they will actually not have to run another play here. It is, and it's just a minute. They can go ahead and shut that off because it's a few seconds ahead. UTA just you know probably wants to avoid the uh, the fumbled snap or anything along those lines to minimize your risk here if they can. And it looks like they might get a playoff. Actually, they won't get a playoff as there are three seconds, two seconds, one second, and then there it is. And that is halftime. And here at Maverick Stadium in Arlington, Texas, and no time left on the clock. The score is 14 to seven, Mavericks over the South Alabama Jaguars. And we are in just a moment. If we can get a chance, we are going to try and go live down to the field as soon as we get a chance. In the meantime, we will be up momentarily. After the third quarter, we will come back and give our scenarios. But we're going to go live right now to the sideline to speak with Jessica with the halftime sideline report. 
I am here with defensive coordinator Dr. Harris. Um, what have you noticed with your defense? I mean, you guys have held them to seven points. What did you notice about them in the first half? Well, I think they showed a lot of character and heart. Um, we always preach men but don't break. And, I mean, they keep getting down on the goal line, but we keep managing them, stop them, so I'm happy with that. What are you guys going to work on to improve in the second half? First of all, keeping our mouth shut. Um, that's obviously hurt us, getting some bad penalties. Um, wrapping up tackles. If we can wrap up tackles, we'll be fine. We just keep breaking through a lot of our tackles. I, don't, I think a lot of our guys are getting tired, so we're trying to rotate some more guys in there to keep them fresh. Thank you, and good luck in the second half. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Jessica, for that report with the defensive coordinator. Very true, uh, stopping the defense or stopping the offense for the Jaguars four times inside the red zone and sometimes even inside the 10-yard uh, line, holding them to no points. You had a missed field goal, a blocked field goal, and just two stops uh, directly. Um, the other thing for the Jaguars, like you said, four times they've, they've been in the red zone, come away with no points. The time they did score, UTA immediately returned the kickoff for a touchdown, and just, you know, that's, that's really rough. That any momentum you may have had, you tied up the game at seven. UTA answered right back to take the lead 14 to seven before, the, you know, before anything else can happen. That's just rough on the South Alabama team. Well, so you're looking at a seven to seven game right now. It really, uh, except for that kickoff return for a touchdown, uh, it is a seven to seven ball game. So for a team to drive as far as they did from South Alabama to get all the way up here, and be outmanned two to one and be down 14 to seven and one of those scores being a kickoff you have to, you know, as a defensive coordinator for south alabama and a coach you got to be pretty proud of your defense playing pretty tight iron man football right well, now. well and you said iron man and the defense has been the key the key statement you said south alabama threw that interception early on that was returned all the way down to the 20 yard line and that's the drive that uta scored on UTA's offense has been a little anemic tonight and not really, you know, any sustained long drives. The time they did score, they got great field position off that interception. So you've got to be very pleased if you're South Alabama and all that they've been able to do. And, uh, you know, I'm excited for the second half. I'm interested to see how both these teams fare. As we've mentioned so many times tonight, the small rosters and the conditioning just going to come into effect here. And, you know, as, as the body tires, the brain tends to fatigue a little bit. And we heard the coach at halftime say that they had a couple uh, – mental penalties, the talking and whatnot, and I expect, sadly, a little bit more of that in the second half as, you know, both teams tire out and fatigue and maybe just aren't as sharp as they were in the first half. Well, it might it might actually come to their advantage having their coach play with them on the field. That may be why you see a lot of penalties, uh, sportsmanlike conducts and personal fouls going against UTA because the coach is actually on the field to not get inside your helmet and to keep yourself quiet. That's a little, you know, you're going to be yeah. a little bit well-behaved with your teacher standing next to you. Then I'm on the sideline where you can't kind of see and you can kind of ignore him. But at the same time, you know, the really the only consistent thing that we've seen tonight is the offense for Southern Alabama sustaining long drives. They have had several long sustained drives dragging out, the, dragging out the clock, especially that one we saw in the second quarter. So I think if they can keep that thing again. going, they can so keep drawing Sears out that those long drives, you know, and, and the first, we really haven't seen a whole lot of the UTA offense for a long period of time. And I think that's what's keeping them in this game. Yeah, UTS, UTA, I'm not even sure if they've attempted a pass tonight. I think they, you know what, I don't think they have either. I think it was all, it was every single play tonight was a running play um, either to the our fullback, which we will not have any stats for you tonight. We've had some personal changes ourselves. But uh, the fullback tonight for the Mavericks really started the game on an 11-yard run, and he, he's, he's picked up at least three first downs tonight and has done an excellent job. I think when they've come in that wishbone formation or even the eye that the uh, South Alabama defense king on the running back and UTA able to sneak that fullback right through the middle of the line, he has not gone down easy once he's gotten through the line. And uh, we talk about him. Now let's talk about on the other side of the ball. It really doesn't matter who's running the ball. You've got three or four running backs and a quarterback who are uh, averaging – about six or seven yards a carry. So the story of the game tonight is an undermanned, undersized um, football team, underslept with little or no energy coming on and really having just an incredible average yard per carry as an offensive unit in the running game. And UTA has just literally allowed this team to come in and walk all over them on offense with the, with the run. And they haven't had very much success passing a few interceptions, a few all near interceptions, and some overthrows. But at least they're trying. They're stretching the field. They're getting this defense opened up. And you would think, well, okay, now they're going to run the ball. Let's put seven men. Let's put eight men in the box. Even then, the offense is still finding a way 
to get through for those yards. And you talk about the size of the offensive line, and they are doing an excellent job of just keeping running. I mean, we've got, I mean, this is club football, so you're not going to be talking about your six foot six offensive linemen that play yeah. at the University of Texas and the University of Oklahoma. But I mean, you got guys that are well over 200 pounds, 250. We've got a guy that's over 300 pounds, Philip Endman. So I mean, Erdman. I'm sorry. That's a pretty big offensive line to run behind in a club football game. Yeah, and on the other side of the ball, your defensive linemen for UTA are also slash uh, linebackers. So um, you got a little bit of size advantage and a little bit of push advantage for the Jaguars. You just hope, is this can advantage last? Can it drag out? If we can continue the long, sustained drives, put all the workload on our running backs, put all the workload on our wide receivers so our, our defensive line can drag things out, they might have a chance to eventually – you know, they've been down there four times. Eventually, they can get something punched into the end zone. Keep your nose clean on special teams. Change the directive as far as how you're going to kick off to them, even though they are missing their kicker. And it's shown tonight with two missed field goals. Mm -hmm. um, it's shown tonight, so maybe we can uh, avoid that. Um, and a after saying that, we want to introduce to you. Yeah, we're giving you, we're giving you full coverage here tonight before the game. UTA Football Club had a, uh, had a pep rally kind of thing, a little tailgate party before the game. The you know, a band here tonight, Otis, was out there performing, and uh, we've got some video of that, so we'd like to go to that video of Otis now from before the football game here. Uh, Maverick Football Club hosting a, uh, a tailgate before the game. We saw Sigma Epsilon, Sigma Phi Epsilon fraternity was out there as well. And we will come back as soon as that is over. We'll be back for our uh, next half report. Let's once they run me deeper to a hell I never knew She said, off my fever, working on my avenues But still I try every time When you say the words to make it right But get the high, can't deny That the time has come to let you go It's just a shame what you do to me, it's not a game How you play with me, I ain't the same Don't let me be, cause I'm chopping off this train You know you just a shame What you do to me, it's not a game How you play with me, I ain't the same Don't let me be, cause I'm chopping off this train You know you just a shame
Welcome back to Maverick Stadium here at UTA for the matchup between the UTA Mavericks and the South Alabama Jaguars. We are joined right now for our keys to the second half uh, with Quince Pippen, who is a retired, you could say, uh, defensive back from the University of Washburn. Play a little uh, special teams and uh, coverage man and defensive back for that team who had to match up against a pretty pretty good teams in, uh, in the years that you played back in, uh, I guess we'll go ahead and reveal those years, 81, 82, 83, and 84, those years back then. Yeah, you uh, can show my age, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, uh, just, just from what you've seen, you've watched the game tonight, Quince, and you've seen uh, there hadn't been a whole lot of passing on one side of the ball and very little on the other. Uh, but from a defensive uh, back point of view and Division two, Division three kind of football, um, from what you've seen, it's 14 to seven, really seven to seven. A kickoff return is the only difference in the ball game. But on on defense, for both these teams, what do you see? One team needs to do more than the other. Well, looking at uh, UTA, actually really gave South Alabama the touchdown when they went for four and inches and yeah. didn't get it. But both teams look pretty good on defense. Uh, looked like one team I was outmanned because I guess one team had to travel too far, and uh, but they look pretty good. Uh, as far as the you know, you've had one team in there. Obviously, you've seen the teams are completely outmanned. Oh, yeah. One's got about 20 to 23 guys on the team. The other one has about 40. And yet you got a team with very little uh, manpower out there taking an, a, a, almost a full nine-minute drive into, uh, to go into the second half. And when you, I mean, what do you tell – how do you get your defense riled up when you're, when you're worn down? And you know they're tired right now, even though they haven't been on the field. But when you're – I mean, you've played Ironman football too. When you, when you give up a nine-minute drive, what do you tell your team – uh, when, when you're when you're down 14 to seven and you ha you don't you ain't got to yell in, in the locker room because there's only about 20 of you guys. I mean, what do you tell those guys? Well, you got I mean, you got to stick in there. You know, they look pretty good because I mean, for them to drive this far, they still playing good de uh, good defense. But each team playing good defense, but offense they not look doing nothing major. But I mean, they look pretty good. You look at me. I mean, because nobody scoring big, no big plays. Mm -hmm. Only big plays was on that kickoff return. Yeah. So. So that may, that may end up being the difference in the ball game. Uh, you've been a part of games that were real close at halftime. Uh, I mean, the game, I mean, it was up in the air. Anybody could have won that game, and you've seen it go both ways. You've seen games at halftime uh, that are real close that go in your favor, and you guys run away and win. And then you've also been close at halftime where uh, everything's kind of broken down in the backfield, oh. and, and you guys have ended up getting blown out, like, namely. Yeah, you know, like, mate, we, I played Mississippi Valley State. We was up 15 to nothing. Next time you know, at the end of the game, you look up, it's 66 to 20. So, I mean, second half, football is played in four quarters. But there was a key to that game that didn't make, that, that didn't lead to those 66 points. And right. well, just share with everybody at home who led to a lot of those 66 points. Well, uh, Jerry Rice. So, I mean, what <laughs> do you expect? <laughs> you weren't the only ones that had trouble slowing him down. So, <laughs> not only did Quince reveal his age, but he also just <laughs> gave, he also just gave a reason why it wasn't so bad because it was Jerry Rice. So, uh, Quince, we have about a minute and a half before we start the second half, and um, if if you had to tell your your team at halftime one thing, and it being South Alabama, you're you're the defense or you're just the head coach of South you're Alabama. You're the player coach for South Alabama. Right. What do you tell these guys? It's down 40. What do you tell them? How do you? What's the one thing you tell them to fire them up? Well, you just gotta don't make mistakes, limit your mistakes, and try to uh, be a more efficient. Because most of the time when they were scoring. They fumble the ball, yeah. and then you look up, and next thing I know, you're going back the other way. Right. I, if I was a coach, I'd do more like simple plays. Every time you do simple plays, they get more yardage. Then all of a sudden, they try a trick play, and then you're going negative. Because Alabama has, has not been stopped on offense tonight. UTA not doing anything to stop the run, averaging six to seven yards of, uh, uh, an attempt. No, it's been, it's been South Alabama driving, getting inside the red zone, and shooting themselves in the foot, foot. And, and going front and forth down, trying to do the razzle down, yeah. trick plays. Instead of you know just running the ball like they've been doing, they've uh, they've been they've been you know completely changing up their game plan inside the red yeah, zone. Why? Yeah, why? When you run running the ball good, all of a sudden you try something unnecessary. When you run the ball five yards every play and you try a trick play, yeah. I mean, what can you blame it on the coach or the players? We'll so. blame we'll blame it on the defensive backs since that's what they did well. to you, <laughs> Jerry Rice. Yeah. So, um, well, Quince, thanks for joining us here at halftime mm -hmm. and. We appreciate you being here, and Bobby and I will be starting the second appreciate half it. here momentarily. Appreciate y'all having me here. And uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of the game, and we'll be back momentarily to start the second half with the kickoff between UTA and South Alabama. Go Mavs.
get that set to start the second half. The University of Texas at Arlington would like to thank the University of South Alabama for the long trip here to Arlington and for participating in this game against the Mavericks. Special thanks to head coach, player coach, Chad Reed. for the Mavericks tonight. James Hyden, head coach. J.R. Honeycutt, offensive coordinator. Dr. Bolton Harris, defensive coordinator. Special teams coach, Dustin Hidner. Assistant offensive coach, Brandon Boyd. Welcome back to Maverick Stadium here in Arlington, Texas, where between the where we're the ready for the second half kickoff between the Mavericks of UTA and the Jaguars of South Alabama. The very heavily undermanned Jaguar team really sticking in there, Bobby, with a 14 to 7 effort right now, even though they're losing. In my eyes, it really still is 7 to 7, despite that kickoff return for a touchdown, dominating on the running game, not giving up any big plays and allowing UTA really to hurt themselves on offense. Well, they really owned that second quarter. They drove down and scored early on, then they kicked it off, allowed the, uh, the, the kicker to return for the touchdown, but then they took the ball over 9-1 left in the second quarter and kept it cold, you know, under a minute left. They just owned and dominated that second quarter, especially through the ground game. We got the change to do it, have to get back to the field. We gotta wait for them, but yes, kickoff here is coming just momentarily. And that was a good, that was a fun interview at halftime with Quince Pippen from, uh, the uh, graduate from Washburn, University of Washburn, down up there in Kansas. It's amazing to hear. You always hear what Jerry Rice has to say about a game, but you never hear about the guys that he beats. And, uh, Quince was good in college, and that was one guy that definitely, not very many of them that took it to him, but he got taken to that day. And there is a kickoff down the center of the field to be bounced and picked up and bobbled about the 22, and he out to the 25, up to the 30, jumps to the outside, breaks the tackles, and gets that thrust back down. And, and fumbled him. There was a fumble, and the referees immediately turn and give it to the South Alabama Jaguars. So right off the bat, instead of kicking the ball deep and letting it return for a touchdown, they start the kickoff uh, with a fumble recovery. Yeah, Lee Burt able to recover that fumble by Brandon Sanders at the 23-yard line, but not the way you want to start the game if you're UT Mavericks, and the Jaguars once again on the verge of scoring here getting great field position. I really think, now the one thing that we've talked about is South Alabama, once they got, they had great success moving down the field. Once they got inside the 20, they changed their game plan. Now, even though they did that every single time, they were still trying to do something different every time they did it. Maybe they're, they've gone through the playbook and they're getting back down to keeping it simple. Like Quint said at halftime, maybe that's what you need to do. Maybe just keep it simple. Three, four plays are not stopping you. Once you try the simple stuff, see if you can get in the end zone. And there is the snap, he's under center. He drops back, looks downfield, throws to the corner of the end zone, and it's gonna be caught for a touchdown. Touchdown, South Alabama Jaguars. About a 25 yard throw in the air, and that right there was just a, a number 86. Terrence Swinson. Swinson just totally towered over his defenders. He outleaped uh, his defenders reaching out in the air, grabbing the ball out of the air and pulling it in and falling into the end zone stepped right in right between one defender he got behind one defender who lost his footing stepped in front of the other defender and just out jumped him and blocked him from the ball great offensive play by the wide receiver from uh, south alabama that right there was just too easy and there is the extra point up 
and it is good and just like that it is 14 to 14 after about 14 seconds in the second half yeah and you made a perfect point uh Terrence Swinson went up and got the ball at its highest point, being able to beat those fin the defensive backs, getting to the ball, and you know he stepped in front of the one, or he stepped between the two defensive backs and just went up and got it as its highest point, which you have to do if you're going to get it. Six foot one, 174 pounds, and he did a great job of leaping in the air and getting to it before any of the Mavericks. Could. Very Randy Moss esque. I'm not comparing him to Randy Moss. I am saying that uh, what Randy Moss does to defenders is he stands between the ball and the defender and make and makes the play and makes the defender have to make an incredible uh, defensive play to try and get the pass. And he just eliminated the defender, pulled the ball out of the air for a touchdown. We talked about a halftime with Quince. If you're the South Alabama coach, you know, what are you going to tell your team? Well, whatever he said at halftime seemed to, to work up and uh, work out and has now fired up his ball club as they come out here early in the third quarter and tie up the ball game at 14. So we got ourselves a game here, and we're just going to redo it. It took 14 seconds, and they're going to try and redo the kickoff, and it's, maybe they can try and something again. It's 14 seconds ticked off the clock here, beginning of the third quarter. A kickoff, a fumble recovery, and a drop back pass to the corner for an end zone. Was that the same quarterback that was in the game, Bobby? Because that looked like a totally different quarterback that stood back and kicked the ball. And the, the ball is kicked and picked up at the 22 again. Runs up the center of the 30, breaks two tackles, and gets struck down at about the 40-yard line. And they are going to spot him right at the 40-yard line. And it was the same quarterback. <laughs> it was Paul Crabtree. But, yeah, that was about the best we've seen him look all season long. I mean, all game long. And here comes the UTA offense. It just seems like a forever since we've <laughs> seen this team come in. We saw them run one play, uh, I think, in the last, you know, 13 or 14 minutes of that second quarter, and then they haven't even touched it here in the second well, half. Well, we saw them. Last time we saw the ball was uh, before nine minutes to go in the second quarter, and then they ran a ball and downed it to end the second half, and that is all we've seen. And that 9-0-1 was after the kickoff and after South Alabama had had it before they scored. So it's been it's been almost 10 game minutes, which is the equivalent to almost an hour since we've seen him, and there is the snap and the handoff up the middle of the running back, and he's only going to get about two and a half, three yards as he moves the pile, and they're going to give him about four yards, so a good extra effort by the running back, and let me guess who that was. Yeah, I do think it was Rose. I think they're going to go back to what was working with them already uh, in the first half and keep it with Rose. And that was Kedrick Rose. That was him. <coughs> Another run. That gentleman should have quite a good, uh, good average after tonight. And same formation. Two wide receivers, one to split to the left, one to the right. Quarterback snaps the ball under center, and he's a court going to keep it himself and run up the center and meet a few defenders who are going to give him about three yards. Yeah, they're running the offset eye to the right-hand side with a tight end to the right. It just seems to me that they're going to they're gonna keep kind of, you know, overload that right side of the offense and, and just power run it to that side. You know, going to play 11 on 11 instead of handing it off. Let the quarterback keep it, turn it up inside so you don't waste him, you know, making. Making it third and three. And I can tell you right now, the Jaguars came to play tonight on defense. They started that opening drive with about an 18-yard sack. Um... And a few, I mean, they, they gave an 11 yard run to, uh, to start the game, then it was three negative plays in a row, including a, a, a muffed punt picked up for a fumble recovery. So they are playing tonight as you have eye formation that's handed off to the fullback, and he's going to be met immediately for a loss of about one yard. No one fooled on the defense right then, as number 60 for the South Alabama Jaguars. I think they're going to give him about a gain of one on the play. It's going to be up fourth and less than a yard now. The Mavericks need to get to the 50, and they're going to be marked just inside the 49-yard line. Russ Allen, the 5'11", 235-pound uh, lineman, met right there. So not much showing on the run there as they make a few personnel changes. Two in, two out, coming in for the Mavericks. And we are just about at midfield. It is going to be, I believe it's going to be third and one. A fourth and one. They're going to go fourth down right at midfield. And last time they went for fourth down, they turned the ball to the Jaguars who converted for a first down. And there is a penalty, and it looks like it's going to be a false start against the offense. Delay a game. 
it was a delay game. They did try and run to the off. They did try and run up there. That's uh, thank you for that correction. They got caught sleeping there on the offense, and that's going to make it fourth and six. So what do you do? And they're making changes, and they're going to punt the ball. So a mental mistake. One of the things that we talked about at halftime with Quince, um, you know, eliminate the mental mistakes. You want to finish this game. It's a close game. Even though you're outmanning the other team, they're beating you. They are physically beating you on the line and the run. They're beating you on the defensive line and the stop. They're beating you. So what do you do? What do you tell them? Stop making the mental mistakes. Uh, keep it simple. And just like the defensive coordinator said at halftime, uh, when Jessica was interviewing him down there in the sideline report, he said, we got to stop making the mental mistakes. we got to keep our mouth shut. And we got to keep our feet still. And J.R. Honeycutt was telling us about their, their season last year. They ended up being like three and seven. And there is the punt. And it's a, got a UTA bounce. It bounces inside the 30 and brought down and out of bounds right at about the 20. Nine yard line. J.R. Honeycutt was telling us they ended the season three and seven, but they led at, ha at the fourth quarter in a couple of games and ended up throwing away the lead. And I don't want to say that's going to happen again, but you know it's already heading in that direction right now as they've been unable to get anything going in the second half and already have a, a fumble on well, the uh, the opening kickoff. Well, seeing tonight and hearing about those games that they led that they ended up losing, that tells you one thing: you're, you've got success. You're winning games. You're either forcing turnovers. Your defense is there. Your offense is there, one or the other, or both. And you end up, because of mental mistakes, maybe because of fatigue, maybe because of lack of experience, uh, and maybe because of youth, uh, that you throw those games away. And that's one of the things that you can't really teach them uh, in the playbook. you got to just teach them on the field. And you brought up a good point of experience, and this is a very young football team. And it's handed to the back, breaks a few tackles, runs up the middle, makes a few more missed tackles, slices to the inside. And finally gets drugged down for a gain of about five yards. Yeah, the experience factor, that was their first season. And, uh, you know, you're going to expect losses like that to happen where you just, you know, you're not used to. you got to learn how to close out games. It's kind of an acquired thing. And uh, I can see them getting a lot better here in their uh, second season. As JR said, it was the best season ever for an expansion club team in their division, which is uh, always a good sign. And we are looking at about second and about six. Here in the third quarter with just about 11.15 to go in the third, the Jaguars have the ball at their own 34-yard line. It's handed off right up the middle, and he's met immediately by the linebacker, but he met the linebacker standing up, so they fell backwards for the first down, Right, the ball being spotted right at the 40-yard line. Yeah, both teams using their fullbacks quite steadily here throughout this game. And you know, when you use that big body back there, number 38, Josh Leeds, 5'9", 240, he's like a bowling ball going through the offensive line. I tell you what, there was a hole there, but the linebacker for UTA did not meet the hole. He waited, which is what led to the first down. Instead of going pursuit into the hole to stop the hole, he waited for the running back to come through. And the same formation that's handed off again. Right the mill, he breaks a few tackles and just squirting through the defensive line and picking up those extra three, four yards, uh, picking up six yards on that carry, going to make it second and four from the 40, uh, the 46 yard line. And South Alabama, they came out in the, uh, after the turnover, threw the ball in the air, they had such great field position, going for the one play drive. Now going back to that ground game that suited them so well in the second quarter. Well, that ground game is it's doing a couple of things. One is chewing up the clock. It's keeping your defense off the field, even though half of them are on the field. And it's wearing down the defense. That he's basically evening out the field right now. Under a center or a shotgun formation, it's a delayed draw to the running back. He breaks a few tackles and spins around, but not before he picks up another Jaguar first down. And like I was telling you before, it looks like, you know, it's almost like you're watching it happen right in front of you. You come in here, outman two to one. What's the first thing you do? Well, we're going to run a drawn out offense with a running game that's going to chew, chew down the clock. And we may be out, we may be down a score, we may be tied. But I tell you what he's doing that's really smart is the Rocky Balboa technique. He's taken to this team and run it up their mouth and smashing it and smashing it and smashing it. And next thing you know, their defense is going to be just as tired as your defense. And they keep going to leech their big back trying to wear down their UTA defense. It's handed off to the running back. He goes to the bottom, breaks a few tackles, not before splitting a defender and getting out for another five-yard gain. So they are picking it up in five or six yards. Yeah, UTA, as we saw late in that second quarter, just no answer for this power run attack from the Jaguars, and, and UTA just struggling to figure something out to slow down this attack. Tell you about the defense for UTA right now is standing. They're standing and watching this offense. They're standing in their position. Uh, they're not getting beat, at a, they're not getting burned, but they're not really pursuing. They're not showing any aggressiveness. The defense not showing any uh, any form of blitz. They're kind of just 
hanging tight and waiting to see what comes at him, which will get you burned every time. Shotgun formation, the snap, he drops the throws to the top of the screen, and it is incomplete. The offensive wide receiver there had to turn into a defender there for a moment. It was almost intercepted, and I know for a fact that had to be Jonathan Johnson. Yeah, and you mentioned a great point earlier. You see a defensive line not getting any penetration, and that's how you blow up a running play and stop it before it gets going, is you know, either you make a pile right at the line of scrimmage and bog things down so there's nowhere to run, there's no ground or no real estate for them to move on, or you get in the backfield and stop the runner before he gets going. We haven't seen any of that from the EPA defensive line. Today. Well, the linebackers are who are making all the tackles, and if your linebackers are making the tackles and it's not in the backfield, that means they've gotten the ball four to five yards down the field as he takes a snap from underneath, and there is a penalty, and we are going to see a false start. Ball start on the offense. First mental mistake by the offense in the second half with 8.56 to go in the third quarter. Like we were talking about, the key to stopping that run is blowing it up. You've got to get someone out of position and get a defender in that backfield causing shifting and moving, which leads to loss of yardage. And really, it, it, they've got three or four men on the line, and they're just not getting any penetration. We go back to that, that weight difference we were talking about. It's not a big weight difference, but... You know, on one play, 15 pounds isn't a lot, but on 25 plays, 15 pounds uh, can make a big difference. And they have got to start sending people on the blitz or on the line, which is what they're showing right now, if they're going to make anything happen. There's the pitch to the outside. Look for that halfback toss pass, and he's going to tuck it, and he's going to throw it last minute. Yeah, and UT had a great opportunity there. They, they had 35, and as you said earlier, five and six yards to pop for South Alabama's offense have been doing on this drive to get the penalty back now to third and long. It's incomplete. Got to pass it there. Incomplete pass. Jonathan Johnson staying at home, not le giving any room for that half, that uh, running back to throw the ball down to that wide receiver. He'd seen that play already three, four times tonight, so when he saw him run out there and not try and make a move towards the line, um, he did just, he just drew right back to the, uh, the running back really giving it away on that play. Yeah, defense did a great job of staying at home there and realizing they'd seen that play a few times already tonight and not being tricked whatsoever. Absolutely. So not very often do you see it, but you're seeing some personnel change on offense here for the Jaguars. And it is fourth down, and they are forced to punt as the ball is sitting right at midfield. And the punter stands at his own 38-yard line. He catches a snap, and he's going to kick the ball. And it is going to fall into territory at about the 30. It's going to get a UTA bounce. And it was picked up, and then it was fumbled. And UTA eventually fell on it. And it's going to be first to 10 from their own 31-yard line. Brandon Sanders, who were, uh, fumbled the opening second-half kickoff, tried to field that punt after it had already been touched. And that's kind of an ill-advised move to make. And he, and he touched it, and it, it bounced away Never from him. He was able to get back to it, but a very risky move there by Brandon Sanders, who maybe trying to uh, atone for his earlier mistake. But could have been another costly one right there, giving South Alabama good field position once again. And here comes the defense in for the South Alabama Jaguars. Yeah, and UTA has got to get something going here. You know, early on in the game, they had a very good start and uh, drove down and scored early in the game. But since that time, haven't seen a whole lot from their offense. And showing blitz are the Jaguars, and they do come in on the blitz. And he, not before the quarterback uh, streaks to the outside and picks up seven and a half, eight yards, seven yards. The quarterback keeper running it to the far, to the near side, splitting the defensive end. Yeah, Eric Bodovich, and I, I don't know what it is about the UTA right-hand side, but almost every one of their runs is going to the right here as they try to follow their tight end, and I guess they're big blockers over the right-hand side. Maybe they see a weakness in the uh, Jaguar defense on the right side, but uh, they just continue to go right as much as they can, and uh, we'll see if they try to throw the ball here. No real passing for UTA so far tonight. And under center is the quarterback, and he's going to wait <coughs> excuse me, for the snap. Drops back, and there is the first pass of the game. It's a high tipped pass and almost intercepted by the cornerback on the far side. The pass intended for number 34. The ball, when it got thrown, just went straight up in the air, and he might have been hit on the arm when he released that ball. Yeah, they were signaling tip to offense. Well, us the players where they look like something that had happened and shaken things up now. So that brings up third and short, and UTA hasn't been great on third down so far tonight. And uh, it's hard for me to think, you know, 
not the best looking pass play there, but I think I would have run for it when he got second and short and just try to pick up this first down and maybe move the chains once before he decided to start throwing the ball here. And let's see what they have to show. They hurry up to the line. <clears throat> the defense for the uh, Jaguars is ready. They show blitz, they bring the blitz, and he's met in the backfield for about a three and a half yard loss, and that's gonna bring up fourth and about six. So another blown up play, the defense for the Jaguars blowing through and shutting down the Mavericks. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of a, a poor exchange. The, uh, the fullback had to step to his side to be able to take the hand off of the quarterback, just didn't have good uh, footwork there in the backfield, and uh, no momentum as he was trying to move forward. Jaguars got to him right away, and yes, as you said, loss of two on the plane. Fourth and five, now they'll have to punt, just struggling on third down to sustain drive. And some personnel changes, and we have a return man deep. He's standing at about his own uh, inside Jaguar territory, about the 32-yard line. There's the snap, the catch, and here is the kick. It was a slot, looked like it was slightly blocked. And the ball's going to bounce inside Jag territory and finally get down at about the 44-yard line. Yeah, I think it just went up the side of the punter's foot and uh, wasn't able to get a good leg into it. Well, he didn't get a chance to really get a good leg into it because he had two defenders about a yard away diving for the ball, so it was like a, a short and quick kick. And we're going to see the Jaguar offense with that pretty stout running game coming in. Well, we said earlier we don't have stats necessarily in front of us, but time possession is ridiculously in favor of the Jaguars. Right and now. rushing yards also. Right now, even though the Mavericks, the score is tied, uh, the Mavericks are lucky that it's, it's tied because the Jaguars have been in the red zone of the Mavericks four times, uh, two, five times including the one they did score that touchdown. It was just outside the red zone, but we're going to count as a red zone score because they were right at the 21-yard line. And there is a handoff up the middle uh, for a gain for about two yards, so the UTA defense showing up right there on that play, bringing them down after two two yards. Yeah, that was Evans once again. And, you know, I expect now 14-14, they South Alabama Jaguars show the run for them all day long. They've got the size and, and bigger bodies, and I just think they're going to pound it down the field, try and eat up this clock the rest of the third quarter. And... Uh, chew up the ground and run the ball as much as they can here. Avoid the air because that's where the mistakes have happened and simplified as Quinn said. And uh, here is second and about second and about eight or seven and the quarterback drops back. He's going to pitch out to his running back. Gorgeous pitch. He's going to cut to the inside and get hammered. And the wide receiver out here for the, uh, the Jaguars kind of looked a little confused. He kind of just stood there as his running back ran by him. Not trying to find anybody to set up a block. Might have been able to get his runner uh, about another four or five yards. Looks a little confused there, but the running back still picking up another yard, forcing a third down in about six. I'm not sure if it's necessarily fatigue or what it is. Really the offense is looking incredibly sharp here. Uh, the Jaguars have scored on that, that early touchdown in the past, but neither team really been able to move the ball that successfully here in the third quarter. Same formation, quarterback under center, snaps, drops back, rolls to his right a little bit, throws downfield deep. He's got a man, and it is going to be intercepted at the 20, down up to the 30. He's up to the 40. He's going to break through, get about midfield, make a few blocks, down to the 40, into the 35, drop down finally at the 20, excuse me, at the 31-yard line of the Jaguars for the second interception of the game, and that is number 30 for his second interception of the night, Jonathan Johnson. So this man by himself is beating the Jaguars. Yeah, it's second interception, but he's done a great job of returning those interceptions, not falling down after he gets them, able to return it. You know, that's a, that's a field position swing. He intercepted at about the 20 yard line. So that's a 40, you know, four yard swing as he's able to, you know, move 50. The oh yeah, it's about a, four, about a 45 yard swing. And not only that, but he has shut down that side of the field. The touchdown they threw was on the other side of the field. And there is going to be a penalty right there, a false start. We had a late player for UTA running on the field. Looks like they were without a tight end, so they're only going to play with 10. And the false start will back them up five. They've got to get something going here. Offensively, yeah, now they're getting put in great field position here in, uh, in Jaguar territory. But and they intercept the pass, take it 45, 46 yards back. Wow deep in the territory and started off with a mental mistake and now you're all the way out to the 41 yard line. Making it second and about 15. So uh, the defense just got a five yard 
Uh, five yard sack on that play as uh, UTA rushes to the line. And under the center, quarterback takes a snap, drops back, looks to the corner, throws up in the air, and it's way overthrown. Out of bounds. A little miscommunication on the wide receiver. He might have not gone to where he was supposed to, but either way, that ball was going out of bounds. I don't want to say that I'm pro prophetic, but I think I said something about, you know, South Alabama's keeping the ball on the ground and just trying to grind out the clock, and then they sure enough throw an interception right after that. And you know, in my opinion, an ill-advised uh, decision to throw the ball there when your ground game has been so good. Well, you've had no success throwing to Johnson's side. He's had success against you. He's had an interception against you. He's had three of them that he's dropped against you. So why test the area of the waters you know that you're not able to swim in? You've got a weak side on this side, and they chose to go against him, thinking that wide receiver is man-on-man -man better, which he wasn't on that play. And there's a handoff by UTA, and he's upended, and he's going to gain no yards on that play. Yeah, just unable to get anything going. We talked about the penetration and the lack of it for UTA. Well, there's the South Alabama penetration coming through and just really stopping uh, – before he could get going whatsoever now and bring up third and long and UT has got to go to the air but they've seen no success in the air at all tonight. Now you're in a situation right where it is third and 15, third and 14 and you're forced to throw something you haven't done all night long. Ball at the 40 yard line right on the spot. There's snap, he drops back and he is nailed as he throws and it is incomplete, almost picked up which would only would have made it fourth and about six with the catch. But he is just drilled as the uh, number 74 comes flying in. J.P. Garari hitting Eric Bodovich. He's trying to get his pass out to number 34, Octavius Ellis. And, uh, and Ellis tried to make a great play on the ball, ball behind him a little bit, and you can't really fault Bodovich for that as he was hit as he threw it. 6'3", 255 pounds running full speed at the back of your head that you can't see. Not a pleasant experience. There's a snap. The punt is up, partially blocked, and it's going to be bounced and picked up at about the 28-yard line. So just a switch in field again. About and 12 yards on the punt, and uh, you really only backed him up to the, to the 28. You were sitting at the 40. Had a good chance to pin him real deep, and you give him a good field position. Yeah, with the way that worked out, it almost would have been just as good to go for it there, but uh, you know, hindsight is 20-20. 4.05 to go here in the third quarter here at Maverick Stadium in Arlington, Texas, where the score is tied 14 to 14 between the Mavericks of UTA here on their home turf and the Jaguars of South Alabama. Back on offense are the Jaguars and they come to the line with a very successful run offense tonight against a porous defensive line for the Mavericks. And there is a snap and there is a run and he's hit immediately. Penetration. And they actually got penetration on the play, and they're going to lose about a half yard. Yeah, they're able to knock back the center, number 55, Adams Hicks. And, and he, you know, laying down the backfield, leaves the running back nowhere to go because you got to either jump over him and get hit or, or run around him or run inside of him. And there's just nowhere for the running backs to go. UTA is doing what we've been talking about they need to be doing all night long. And sure enough, they get a stop. 14 to 14 here. Eventually, one of these teams is going to begin to show some serious fatigue. Clock running with 3.30 to go in the third. And the Jaguars come up to the ball into position in the shotgun formation, which we've seen sporadically tonight for the Jaguars. And there is the snap. He drops back and he throws out to his running back. It's caught wide open in the field. It's up to the 30, cuts to the inside, and gets dropped down at about the 36-yard line. Going to make it a third and three. And they're third and two, excuse me. And they are going to be going for the first third down of the second half with three minutes to go. Yeah, they, they see, that's the, the most success they've had is when they've thrown it out of the backfield to Evans. Uh, when they tried to go deep, as you said, you know, the two interceptions by Jonathan Johnson, they did have the 21-yard the touchdown pass, but the best success they've had is throwing it to Evans out of the backfield before any UTA player is able to pick him up. You know, he was wide open. When he caught that ball, he didn't have anybody within 10 yards of him. And he did pick up about eight yards on the play. Quarterback, handoff to the running back, runs right up the fullback, right up the middle, and he's met immediately, give him forward progress, and he gains maybe no gain at all. And there is a fumble before the play is whistled dead. 
and all the way down at about the 29 yard line and the Mavericks pick up the fumble and they are in all, on the back on offense again with 225 here to go in the third quarter. Mavericks back in business at the 29 yard line. Yeah, that yeah, back in business is the way to describe that. Tough, tough turnover if you're South Alabama just trying to pick up you know some yardage there and get out of your territory. Now you're giving UTA great field position and a chance to score. UTA you know, struggling since the first quarter to move the ball up the field and now you're gonna give them a chance where they don't really have to go so far. They only, only need 29 yards and that's about the best they've been able to do on any of their drives. And so that's just unfortunate for South Alabama. And there is a step in the players down there in the center. They are excited. Maybe we might be able to turn something into some points here. And it's blown up and he gets slammed and the running back breaks to the outside. He gets drugged back and they're gonna blow the whistle dead but not before they give him about four and a half, five yards. Yeah, <laughs> and that's Rose. As I mentioned earlier, he's tough to take down. He probably broke four tackles on that play and just was not, I mean, they, one of the, uh, the Jaguars had his ankle and he would just not go down. Other Jaguars coming up and hitting him and he finally he decided to you know, fall down and take what he had, but just not an easy player to tackle. And it is. They are going to give him about five yards on the carry and making it second and five at about the 25 yard line. Some personnel in and out for the Mavericks. And the turnover costly for the Jaguar defense who do not need to be on the field with the little staff they have tonight. Quick hurry up line, set, snap, it's handed off again. Pitch back, drop, fumbled, and a bad decision by the quarterback for UTA just about gave it. The defenders got back there and just waited for him to throw it and pitch it back to his running back. He caught it and got dropped back for a loss of about five yards, make it third and 10. Yeah, it was kind of tough on Brandon Sanders earlier tonight when he fumbled the kickoff and then, then almost had that problem with the punt earlier, but that wasn't really his throw. The ill-advised uh, and, and poor, poor pitch on the quarterback's part and then Brandon, Jones, or Brandon Sanders did a good job of covering it up and making sure they retain possession. When defenders came in for containment on the quarterback, ran right to the running back, and the quarterback threw it right to him. Third and 10, there's the snap and the handoff right up the middle. He breaks the tackle, he gets downfield into the open field. 10, five, touchdown UTA Mavericks. And there is Brandon Jones. Simple Brandon Sanders. Sanders. I'm not sure if he's expecting a pass there on third and 10. UTA just ran the ball right up the middle of the field. Touchdown, Brandon Sanders. And with 50 seconds to go in the third quarter, Brandon Jones just squeaks right through the line and just kicked in the afterburners and took off and there was no one. And he got through, after he got past that line, he was untouched. So that South Alabama fumble really does end up being costly. You know, UTA not able to move the football. You give them a short field to work with, they are able to come up and score. And Brandon uh, blow the whistle dead and there is a penalty. They're gonna mark him back. Looks like it might have been a delay of game. And they're gonna line it up again and they're at about the eight yard line. Not exactly something to do when you don't have very much of a kicking game on both teams. It backs you up for the kick and this is an extra point. Daniel kick Phillips into uh, attempts PAT. Jaron Vague, the hold is blocked. And so it is blocked, another extra point blocked, looking for the recovery by somebody. And there is a penalty thrown. Two flags come flying in. Might see some unnecessary roughness on the Jaguars defense. So a blocked kick on the extra point making it 2014 may come into play here. We might see, uh, this is a golden opportunity for the Jaguars who blocked the kick, who can, if they can muster a score, in the fourth quarter and their defense can hold, they can win, they can walk there with a, uh, a, a close win. Yeah, we've got offsetting personal fouls, it looks like against both teams, just a little push each other to go, going on down there on the field. And they're gonna send both teams to the respected sidelines and the play will count. And we are gonna see a kickoff and maybe a play before the end of the third quarter. Yeah, and it's rough on these teams, they're both playing for pride here. You know, th these are club teams. They don't get any funding from the universities. And so, you, you know, they're just out there for the love of the game. There's a lot of pride on the line. So you're seeing the barking back and forth. And, and both teams just want to come away with a W here tonight. But it, it's rough for South Alabama. They no sleep. You know, it's hard to get up and play a three-hour football game with no sleep when you're undermanned at 20 guys suited up. 
And so uh, that, that fatigue must be settling in That's now. 19 men with one coach suited up. But the one good thing is, is that you ride back on the bus with no sleep on the way up here and a full football game and an away game at night. The one good thing is, you should have no problem sleeping. <laughs> yeah, on the, on the bus ride home, it's going to be uh, pretty easy to catch some Z's. And again, the Jaguars having two men deep at the 20-yard line. And the ball is spotted at the 30. UTA ready for the kickoff. 50 seconds to go in the third quarter. 20 to 14 UTA after a missed extra point. The kick is off. It is high and very short. Fielded and returned right up. And he's going to break a few tackles. Get to the outside and finally get drugged down, but not before he gets up to the 45-yard line. Yeah, you said it right. It was, it was a high kick and it was short. And the kick coverage almost overran where the uh, the player fielded it at. He had some space up the middle as the kick coverage was on both sides of him, but he couldn't really get going forward and uh, just didn't have a lot of speed, so he couldn't get to the hole that was open. Lynn Durger on the return. First down, the the 45 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Jaguars back on offense. First and 10 at the 45 yard line, almost to midfield. Quarterback under center, drops back, pitches out to his wide receiver, or his running back. He's gonna cut the middle and pick up about four and a half, five yards. But there is a flag on the play. Yeah, two flags coming in. You gotta think it's holding. You see a change up the defense a little bit there. They had seven guys on the line of scrimmage. It looks like they're trying to play a little gap defense here and uh, not really read and react so much as just fill every single gap. And uh, they did a good job there, forcing it to the outside. 38 seconds to go after the penalty. And the penalty will be marked off. It is a holding penalty. It backs them all the way back up to the 35 yard line. Not going in their favor, 30 seconds to go. They have a golden opportunity to if they can score to go up by a point as they wind the clock and 30 seconds to go. Line up for the play. Under the center, and they do have seven men on the line. They are trying a little bit of a different gap defense. He's gonna drop back and gonna throw down field, and it's going to be almost intercepted again by Jonathan Johnson. <laughs> came up with his third interception tonight. Well, it looked like they had two receivers running routes to the exact same spot. Quarterback put a little too much mustard on it as it sailed over both of their heads. And Jonathan Johnson just playing, uh, playing defense, reading the ball. Almost came up with his third pick of the night. But they have, the, they have, that was smart. That is what they're doing. If UTA is going to drop seven men on the field, it looks like uh, the offense, um, the coaches for the Jaguars are going to say, hey, if you're going to put seven men on the line, then I'm going to open up on the outside and make your four guys out there beat my five. 17 seconds to go here in the third quarter. 20 to 14, UTA here at Maverick Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Yeah, in, now backing off. in the shotgun formation. He's going to look downfield to find a wide receiver. Wide open and caught and dropped yeah, down yeah. inside yeah. Maverick yeah. territory yeah. at about the 41-yard line for about a 30-yard gain. 25 yards on that on that gain. And uh, UT only sent four on the pass rush. But Evans, who, who we talked about coming out of the backfield as a receiver, now lined up at receiver. He's like Brian Westbrook out there. They'll put him all over the field just trying to get the ball in his hands. And sure enough, the, the uh, pass complete to him. He's able to catch it and make a, a few yards after the catch. That was actually a really nice throw because the ball got dropped right in over defender for a catch. 12 seconds to go. Only five seconds ran off the clock on that play. That's the end of the third quarter. And the Your umpires are meeting midfield. Uh, and that, that yeah, uh, there it is. Clock person just not, uh, on the ball. There it is, and that is the end of, of our third quarter here at UTA Maverick Stadium, we're twenty to fourteen, and we're going to go live to the sideline for a half, uh, excuse me, a third quarter report from Jessica Trover. Go ahead, Jessica. I am here with some UTA students. So why did you come out here tonight? 
Um, I came because I saw a flyer on Facebook that I got from a friend, and I found out it was free, so I just thought I'd come out and support our team. Why did you come out here? I came out here because it's the first game that we've had here for like 20 years, and that's a really big deal around here. And what do you think about their football club? I think it's awesome. I think that, you know, if they really practice really, really hard and if we could bring football back, that'd be great. I'm Jessica with Penny Entertainment. Back to you guys. Thank you, Jessica, for that interview with those guys. And, you know, it has been a long time since they've had a game here. A pretty decent crowd for a football club. And, obviously, the South Alabama crowd a little suffering tonight with just six people over there. And we are... Oh, come on, there's eight. A shotgun drops back, looks down first and ten. It's thrown, and it is underthrown. It bounces, and he had a step on a, a, his tight end there down the right seam. Swinson, yeah, came from the outside receiver spot. He had a step on his man, pass underthrown, however. And, yeah, uh, this is a good-sized crowd. I mean, UTA's football program here, these exhibitions they played here in the fall, they went to Texas State, and they went to San Antonio to play Trinity, and this is their first home game here in the exhibition. They played five home games last spring, but this is a good-sized crowd for a club football team that's trying to trying to gain an audience. Trinity, we all know, for that 400 million pitch <laughs> return for a touchdown. It's been all over YouTube and the and uh, PCs everywhere. There's a handoff right up the middle by the Jaguars, and he's going to run downfield, but not, and he gets hit, but not before he gets hit after about a 13-yard gain. Yeah, Evans able to pick up the first down, and what, he eat up those yardage in a hurry or what? He got that ball and <laughs> took off. Offensive lineman is very tall. I'm pretty sure you and I could walk together through that hole was so big. Well, I would have walked first. I think I have a little bit of speed. <laughs> I might have been there at least block for you because I got a little bit of a weight problem. So, um, no, but jokingly, on that particular play, you, another emphasis on the running play and the running game for the Jaguars. Just the, the Mavericks just not ready for this running game tonight. Oh, no, and you made a point earlier about that missed extra point. The Jaguars are driving right now. They score, and they kick their extra point. They're going to go up and take the lead here. And there is a handoff, and he's tripped up because, like what you said, was the key to the second half. A defender blows up the play by getting in the backfield and forcing an improvisation by a running back, and he gets upended for a loss, or actually for no gain. Yeah, and it's hard to do there. If you're the running back and you're coming from seven or eight yards deep, you might have a little bit more of a chance to react, but that's the fullback coming across. He's only about three yards off the line of scrimmage, and so if uh, an offensive lineman gets blown back in his face, he's got nothing he can do in that situation, and sure enough, that's what happens. It is the handoff up the middle, and he blows up the middle again, breaks a few tackles, dives forward after picking up about seven and a half yards. And that was Evans, and they ran the play to the left in the first time, just a you know, halfback lead there, fullback leading him on the block, and the, and the fullback went to go kick out. And, and UTA's defense over pursued a little bit. Evans doing the smart thing and, and you know, cutting it back towards the middle, trying to find some real estate down open. Three. But uh, UTA able to tackle him, but he's doing a good job of following his fullback. Good run again by Evans as they are about the 23, 24 yard line. Quarterback under center snaps, turns around, hands off, and he's, in, he's met immediately, and he's going to lose a yard on the play. Penetration again, three UK players in the backfield. One of them almost got to the quarterback before he was able to hand it off. Two others waiting for Evans as he took the handoff, and he just he had nowhere to go. <laughs> now, I never thought I'd, now I didn't think I'd say this tonight, but with where UTA is playing on defense right now with that many men on the field and drawn up, they know what the Jaguars are going to do. They know, they, they just know they're going to run the ball. Why not pop out a little bootleg and find your tight end down the seam? I got a feeling that they're going to fake the handoff right and, and get the quarterback. He's left handed, get him rolling left outside the pocket. They do have Swinson on that side of the field. He's been their main target tonight. And he is man on man, and he is playing 15 yards off Swinson. He's been wide open, and he's going to look downfield and get and throw the ball way downfield. And Swinson had it become the defensive back. There was a halfback pass once again. And it was incomplete. Swinson not able to get in front of his defender that time. And they may be coming in for a field goal attempt. Uh, it's fourth down there. It's going to be a turnover on downs. UTA's Maverick Club football team going to take over on offense now. So another missed opportunity Brandon near Steve. the red zone for the Jaguars of South Alabama. 12-25 to go in the fourth quarter. A very close fought game here at UTA at Maverick Stadium, 20-14. And 
here comes the offense again and see if they can put something together. Yeah, UPA, just 12-27. Uh, they, can, they can get two or three first downs and uh, move the ball a little bit, take some of the time off the clock, and then, you know, even if they can't score here, but put it in. South Carolina's back, will be in good shape. And they get smothered on the run attempt right there as they're going to lose about a yard on the play, give them forward progress. Yeah, Brandon Sanders, you know, the penetration fights right back to him, and uh, he's just not able to get anything going. And, you know, UTA got to move the ball here a little bit. If they punt, they haven't been getting anything great off. You know, even if they punt from here, they, they've been punting less than 30 yards, so conceivably they don't really gain any yards here. South Alabama would still get the ball in UTA territory, and I'm, I'm more fearful of, of South Alabama's offense at this point than I am of UTA's. We are waiting to see if, you know, we have about 11.45 to go here in the fourth quarter. And we have yet to see anybody put together a long sustained, <laughs> excuse me, sustained drive. And it's intercepted by the Jaguars at about the 35 yard line. And he runs it back down to the 20 yard line. And so we are gonna see the Jaguars again at the 20 yard line in the red zone as an ill-advised pass is telegraphed by the quarterback from UTA. He turns, looks to the outside. His quarterback goes, excuse me, his wide receiver runs about 15 yards down the field and the quarterback throws about 10. The cornerback steps in front of the pass, picks it off, and returns it about 12 yards. I believe the man who made the interception, the interception was the player coach, number 85, Chad Leaves. Wow. <laughs> no <laughs> comment. <laughs> Helps when you're, you're the coach on the field. I guess he, uh, he read the play and knew what was coming. I guess he finally told these, those defenders out there, said, look, just do it like this, and went out there and showed him. And now you've got a spread open offense here for the Jaguars. You got four wide receivers, one going in motion behind the line. There is a snap. The block gets a handoff run right up the middle, and he's going to go nowhere. He's going to pick up about two and a half, three yards. Yeah, South Alabama putting two receivers to either side. UTA has to respect that, so they're spreading out their defense. They only had four defensive linemen and a linebacker, and it looked like maybe a rover safety coming up to help with the run. Good defense by the – great defense by the defense, good tackling, but – in that particular case, you want to run it. I would, I'd run it again on that play. You got to, when you have seven men in the box and you've been running on them all night, and you spread them out. Why not try it again? Yeah, you've got those big five offensive linemen we've been talking about throughout the night on, on four defensive linemen and a linebacker. That leaves no one really to make the tackle at the line of scrimmage if everyone gets their block on the, you know, the running back. Yeah, you're playing five on five there, and you got to have a safety or someone to come up. Here we are in the red zone again for the South Alabama Jaguars. It's a shotgun and it's overthrown, and it's. Called on by the Mavericks. And the fumble is a fight for the ball at about the 40 yard line. And the ball is. Uh, we're still waiting for the referee to give us a signal whose it is. Well, if South Alabama retains possession, it'll be third and 27. I'm not sure there's a lot of plays in their playbook for that situation. And they do retain it. So third and 27 now. They got to get all the way down inside, almost to the 12 yard line. There has to be. Bad snap leads to about a 20-yard loss. Ten. Any, uh, any, any hopes they had of scoring on this drive and trying to pull even with the Mavericks? They well, need right they need 10, 20, they need 27 yards for the first down. Their longest play of the night has been about 18. And there is a shotgun snap. He drops back, rolls out to his left. Looks downfield, and he's going to run in the open field. There's no one there. He's going to cut in, go to the inside, jump back out to the outside, and get back to the original line of scrimmage. And it's going to make it fourth and 11. So great effort by Crabtree, jumping to the outside. He had a man downfield, but he was double covered. Jonathan Johnson over on that side, covering the pass. So he just decided to run in the open green where there was no one out there. Yeah, 16 yard gain on the play. He rolled to his left, his more comfortable side to be throwing from. And, and you, you, know, you made the statement. Triple covered. I think he had safety yeah. over the top. Yeah. Everyone going swiftly as he went down the field. No linebacker or anybody in the flats. He decided to go with it. Made a beautiful cutback run. Able to pick up a few more before he was brought down. And gives him fourth and something a little bit, little bit more manageable than fourth and 28. And they are going to go for it here with 9-10 to go in the fourth quarter. They hurry up to the line. UTA not set. Shotgun formation. Calls for the snap. There's the snap. He drops back. Throws down the middle of the field. It's up and it's caught. And he is dropped down at about the five-yard line. So another conversion on third down and fourth down. Down to the five-yard line. 
And uh, again, a penalty on the field. And they are going to call against South Alabama. Talk that about hurts. That is just a heartbreaker right there, <laughs> folks. Hurts. Emotional roller coaster. You get, a, you get a first down on fourth and 12 conversion, trailing by six in the fourth quarter. You get down, to, you know, you're going to have first and goal, and a holding penalty is going to bring it back. And that is just hard to handle. UTA getting holding very lucky holding there, holding getting the holding penalty, penalty called on that play when they gave up about a 16 yard pass on the play. And that is going to make it fourth and 22 from the 30, 34 yard line. They need to get to the 13 for first down. Maybe the 12 to be safe. Maybe the end zone to be really safe. Timeout South Alabama, 8.39 left. Talk about a roller coaster. You get all the way downfield to get a you get an interception. You get an interception return, and you then snap you snap it over the head, and then you go back, and then you move on a 16-yard run, then you get a 17-yard catch, and then you got a holding penalty, bringing you back after you've uh, done really well on third and fourth down. Yeah. You know things are going so crazy right now. Why don't you just try a field goal from this far out? You might make it. I'm not sure they're going to have another opportunity. Uh, give UTA the ball back, and I, I, I would have to think they run the, try to run the clock out if they're, they're leading by three, but. Seen the uh, the struggles mm. without their uh, well, the starting kicker South Alabama's had. They can't get a first down. UT has not been able to get a first down in quite some time. So you get the ball back, you're only able to run off about two two and a half minutes, and then you have to get rid of the ball, or you throw it away, or you fumble it away. UT has not been able to move the ball at all. UT doing their best to try and pull out a, uh, a win here, which they can get out of here, tuck their tails and run. You know, they, they win a close one at home. Man, after giving up such Four, a, man, an awesome two, two plays by South Alabama, you would think you would hate, if you walked out of here with a loss, that's a long drive home. Yeah, at your UTA, you gotta defend your home turf. You haven't played here since uh, of April. Of course, if you're Alabama, you'll probably just sleep. And they're gonna be punting the ball. So uh, I guess they do trust their defense and think that UTA is not going to be able to get anything going. And then they used a, a short snap to the up back. Wow, what a punt. Down to the five, maybe four. Good yard punt. Line. Great punt. And that is going to pin the Mavericks deep inside their own territory, inside the five yard line. And they had two guys, they had the up back, is who they snapped it to. They didn't even snap it to the punter. And uh, UTA, you know, not a whole lot you can do in that situation. But uh, great punt. Now you're going to, you know, UTA slow UTA down here and stop them. Yards. You're going to get the ball in, in Maverick territory yards. once again with a chance to score a few minutes left on the clock. <clears throat> now, hey, do you send the dogs on this play, bud? You know, I used to be a big fan of the blitz, but now I find that, you know, you blitz, you, you get a really good chance to get burned. And I'm, you go with what's been working for you for South Alabama. No need to change that up now and take a huge risk. You know, you punted because you thought your defense could stop UTA straight up. So I'm going to play them straight up here. And, uh, and make them run the ball on me right now. What about the fact that, you know, their passing game has been absolutely on ice tonight? Yeah, that's why I just gear up against the run and not worry about the pass. I just, I'm not fearful of that UTA pass. And I'm going to make them try and beat me. And he is going to get hammered after picking up no gain. He gets hit in the backfield and somehow musters to get back to the line of scrimmage. And we are looking at about a half yard gain. Brandon Sanders. We're going to give him a lucky and a, a, a very generous half yard. As he was hit and he crawled forward to the five yard line. Yeah, South Alabama did a good job uh, of reading, reading the play, seeing where it was going. I think they had to expect a run. UTA looking for a little breathing room. And, uh, and South Alabama completely prepared for that, able to slow down the running play before it gets going. And they're lined up tight. And his handoff to the fullback, and he goes nowhere. Yeah, we spoke about that at. Uh, at halftime, a lot of success for the fullback, especially early on, but it looks like South Alabama's made those adjustments now and not going to let the fullback beat them. Inside the, uh, they're at the five-yard line. It's going to be third and ten now. After two runs that got them nowhere, one of them luckily to get back to the offensive line, or the line of scrimmage. Jack, or excuse me, the Jaguars of South Alabama playing this run very tough right now. They know right now if they can stop UTA from getting a first down, Forcing a punt, they're going to get the ball in absolutely stupendous, incredible field position. There's a handoff to the top side, and he's going to get drugged down 
four, a gain of about a yard. And it is fourth and eight, and Mavericks forced to punt, so the the uh, the South Alabama Jaguars doing their job here. Yeah, I mean, that was a smooth coaching decision there. Punt it to the Mavericks, say, hey, we're going to stop you on defense. Sure enough, they did just that, and now they're going to get the ball back. They're, the returners are even standing at the 36-yard line, so they're not expecting a big punt here. So the, uh, the coaching staff for the Jaguars uh, – Use their use field position strategy here to try and get the game back in their hands. I guess being on the field, he's got a sense for the game and exactly how things are going considering he's standing on the field. Literally, and there is a penalty. There's a false start on the offense. They're going to back him up even tighter. Put it, pinning their punter all the way back to the in the back of the end zone. All right, Thad, so he's short of usual. Usually these punters stand between 12 and 15 yards deep of where they're going to kick it. I think South Alabama is going to go for a block here with the risk of running into the kicker, roughing him, and giving up a 15-yard penalty, automatic first down, or you just say, hey, you know what? We get the ball to 35, 30-yard line. We think we can score anyways. We're not really going to come at this. If anything, we'll set up the return and make sure there's no fake. I'll tell you what, the first thing I think of is the average for the punter. And it is blocked and picked up in the end zone for a touchdown. And they nope. d they did send everybody. I was thinking you go back and you block because he's had a terrible average. But he does. And we do have an injury on the field. He's at the back of the end zone. And he is down. I believe that is the punter. No indication yet whether it's going to be a safety or a touchback yet. Yeah, it looks like he got the ball up and he got the, the ball was blocked. I don't know if they got a piece of his leg. Maybe we can get a shot of uh, what the trainers are doing down there to what they're tending to, and they are up and they are moving, and they are sending them back to the sideline. They're going to help them up, and that is a good sign to see. They're going to get him a couple shoulders to carry on, and he is going to limp off the field there. And South Alabama, I, you know, I, in response to your question, I was about to say fake the run in, go back and make a block because what are the odds that he's had a terrible average on kicking Eight tonight? To go the You're going to get the ball inside the 30-yard line, most likely. And they are going, they've already ruled it a safety, and now they're going to have to punt without their kicker. Yeah, so now <laughs> that decision to go after the punt and block it is going to end up hurting them. They were not able to recover it in the end zone. So they're only going to get two points for a safety. They're still down four, so they're going to need a touchdown anyway. And now they're going to be further away from the end yeah, zone. Yeah, exactly. Now, now UT will have a chance to free kick it from the 20-yard line and it will most likely give South Alabama worse field position. So that coaching move to go after the punt is going to might Pretty costly, yeah, exactly. Uh, you let him kick the ball off to get the ball and try and make a return out of it. Even if it's 10 yards, you're almost inside the red zone again. And exactly. that safety, you took two points, but you gave up 40 yards. Yeah, and, and you, you know, the two points is nice. And you, you, know, you always want to score, but you would have been in a much better situation than you're going to be in now, and you still need that same touchdown. It's not like, you know, you can kick a field goal it, now. Yeah, I didn't change it. Wins, change you didn't to really a touchdown. improve your lot whatsoever. Tell you what, if it was 20 to 17, that might have been a big deal. And we are going to see them free punt from the 20. There's a nice kick, and he's going to return it at about the 40. He's up to the 45, the 50. Gets inside the 45, breaks down to the 40, and gets struck down. And there is another penalty on Evan, the play. Harris, the line. Looks like it might be a block in the back from up here. From the judge that threw the flag, it's a block in the back. <laughs> That's just going to back them up even further now and give them terrible, terrible field position to start this drive when they need a touchdown. And it is against them with a little bit over, a little bit under six minutes to go in the fourth quarter, 556. 20 to 16, 556 to go in the fourth quarter. So yeah, South Alabama now going to take over inside their own territory. When they were waiting the punt, their deep returner was standing at, his, at the 36-yard line. So that's at least about 15 yards that they gave up theoretically if he just fair caught the ball where he was standing. So in essence, after the whole thing's over, uh, you gave up almost 50 yards in field position. And there's a pitch to the running back towards the outside. He cuts up the middle and gets drugged down after about five yards.
So with the clock running at 5.45 to go, the Jaguars, South of Alabama, if they want to win this game, they've got to find a way to get drive all the way to the end zone. Getting to the 20-yard line has not been hard for them. Getting into the end zone is what's been hard for them. Yeah, they just often seem to shut down as they get inside the red zone. But, you know, 526, we've seen them hold a nine-minute drive. I just got to uh, – they've had the most success running the football. Uh, I expect to see a lot of that from them here. And there it is right now. He runs up the middle, and he breaks a few tackles. and gets drugged down, not before he picks up another four yards, and it's going to set up a third and one from inside UTA Maverick territory at their 45-yard line, and they've got two timeouts. When do you start using these? Uh, I think you still got to wait quite a ways here. We got more penalty flags on the field. And they are after the play. And it is a personal foul. Against South Alabama. South's South going to back them up here now, just shooting themselves in the foot. So they will start over where they just began. I'll make it second and 16 now. And just backing up, not exactly what you want to do. Five minutes to go in the fourth quarter here in Arlington at Maverick Stadium. 20 to 16 UTA with a very close fought game between these two teams. Spread open offense, two twins on the far and the right, far left and right, and Craig is gonna go to his left, throw down field, and bounce to his wide receiver, and it is incomplete. Third down. Swinson not able to run under that. Crabtree, Crabtree tried to put some air and let him get to the sideline and make, a, make an adjustment on the ball, but Swinson just unable to do anything. All right, so you have 444 here left in the, uh, in the fourth quarter. UTA leading 20-16. We just had the, the punt blocked, which gave, gave South Alabama two points, but hurt them in field position terms, and now they, they still have to score and get a touchdown. And, uh, you know, the two points not really going to be benefiting them all that much. You know, if they were down only a few beforehand, they could have you know, potentially been in position to kick a field goal. But now they're in a fourth in a very tough situation. They need more than 16 yards for a first down. Looks like they're going to punt again. And there Flag is, on the play. And there is the punt. And it's dropped, and it gets... Uh, Nice bounce, but it's going to be inside the 35-yard line at about the 34. Let's see what the penalty call is from the referees. False start on the offense, and they will probably make them kick that again. Yeah, you, you know, six more seconds off the clock. Oh, no, it's going to be declined, it looks like. First down, UTA will take over now. So what turned out to be a pretty good situation for the South Alabama Jaguars pinning the Mavericks deep inside their own five, forcing them to punt, going in for the block, blocking the punt and not able to recover it as it goes out of bounds, picking up the safety, but then getting the punt from the Mavericks and just marching backwards on three straight plays. Yeah, you know, after that punt, they had pinned Maverick down inside the five yard. Everything looked like it was going their way. Every single bounce was, was falling their way. It looked like it was gonna, the stars were aligning for them, but. Some questionable coaching decisions. Complete role reversal right there. And uh, same formation they've been running the entire second half. Takes a snap from underneath, hands it off, runs up the middle, tries to break a few tackles, and picks up about a yard, making it second and nine. 4.30 to go in the fourth quarter. Yeah, UTA going to try and run out the clock here, keep it moving. You know, South Alabama, they've now, you know, two times in a row been forced to punt, just unable to get anything going here late in the fourth quarter, UTA's defense finally standing strong, which they haven't, hadn't really done in a while, and had let, you know, U, uh, South Alabama march into their territory with Ben not break. Well, they were they were stopping them before they were getting to that 20 yard territory and into the red zone and, and just doing an excellent job of, of slowing down that offensive attack. Well, that is a perfect example of their, their defense tonight, Ben, but do not break, giving up the whole field and then not, there's a handoff right there up the middle of the fullback. And he's going to gain about four yards on the play before he's driven backwards. The whistle is blown, and it will set up a third and four. If anything is going to happen here for the Jaguars, they do need to make a stop here if they're going to try and get the ball one more time. Yeah, and it's going to be close this time to start using, uh, using those timeouts now. If, if UTA able to get a first down here on third down, and, and okay, it looks like they're going to go ahead and take one this at, at this moment right here. But yeah, if, if UTA gets another first down, 
with South Alabama only having two timeouts left, it's going to be hard to get the ball back with any amount of clock left. Well, if you look at the kind of offense you're running, you need about three minutes to be able to move it a half the length of the field anyway because they are not a downfield throwing team unless it's the halfback that's throwing it. Yeah, I mean, the, the most success they had was the touchdown pass to start the second half after the, the, the fumble on the opening kickoff, the 21-yard yeah. touchdown pass, about the real only success that uh, Paul Crabtree has had from the quarterback position. And that leaves them with one timeout to go, and they do not even have the ball yet. So UTA being, I would probably say, two to one in the rushing yard category, definitely being outrushed, being outpassed, but finding a way to win the game, you know, getting some crucial turnovers, getting a kickoff return for a touchdown, giving up a safety, we gave him the two points, but kept the lead. And here come the Mavericks. Quarterback under center lining up. Seven men on the line. Here comes the blitz. There's the handoff, and he gets hammered in the backfield. And he's going to go nowhere and lose about a yard. Well, I do like the play call from UTA, just for trying to waste a little bit more clock now. Just too much penetration allowed. And that's going to send up a third down, third and about seven yards. Two fifty-two and counting to go in the fourth quarter here. Time has almost completely ran out as they are forced to punt here. I think UTA is going to take a delay of game penalty here, call a timeout. Yeah, it looks like they're going to call a timeout just before the play clock expires. Going to do anything they can to, to limit the time yeah. South Alabama will have to, to score. So South Alabama, you know, in essence, is going to get the ball with about two minutes and 30 seconds, maybe 2.31 to go in the fourth quarter. And have we seen anything with quick strike, quick strike offense from them tonight? None whatsoever, I don't believe. So we're going to have to see them open the playbook a little in. Uh, which should be interesting because we haven't seen anybody really try and go deep or anything like that. James Hyden trying to uh, come up with some strategy here for the UTA football club. And you can see right here the uh, South Alabama Jaguars are loading up the box. They are not going to allow anything up, <coughs> excuse me, up the middle. And they got to the, the punter the last time. We'll see if they can do it again. Oh, close. And he gets the ball and fumble it, and it's picked up, luckily, by the South Alabama Jaguars. Fumble the ball forward, backing up, trying to catch as he's backing up. The ball rolls forward, and the up man, number wide receiver number 11, excuse me, number 21 for the Jaguars falls on the ball. Yeah, that was the first mistake we've really seen Evans make all day long. He's doing a great job of running. He's done a great job of catching the ball out of the backfield and even set out as receiver one time, made a great catch. But uh, that was the, about the, the, the fool, most foolish thing we've seen him do all game long, but it's not going to hurt them too much. 2.30 left, ball at the 34-yard line, 66 yards to go to score and take the lead here. South Alabama going to have to try to maybe come with a little razzle-dazzle here, something to get that quarterback rolling to his left so he's able to throw downfield. And his, uh, his main target tonight, Terrence Swinson, is going to have to find a way to get open and away from Jonathan Johnson. 66 yards away, you're going to need more than 20-yard passes, and you got one touch, you got one timeout, two and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. There is the handoff right up the middle, and he's thrown downfield, wide open and caught and drugged down inside the 40 at about the 36-yard line. So that is the first way to start it. 28-yard pass play, and uh, Swinson got a step on Jonathan Johnson. I think Johnson might have been expecting a shorter route, but Swinson just ran a fly pattern and a beautiful pass from Paul Crabtree as he led his man down the field. Well, Jonathan Johnson bit on the play action and came up when he faked the handoff and then stepped back and just threw it downfield. 
the first mistake we've seen from Mr. Johnson tonight might be a little costly. So now at the 36-yard line, 210 left to play, and, and they can run their basic offense now. And he drops back again for a pass, and he's going to throw to the opposite side of the field. The defender, oh, the defender fell. And then he got up and tipped the ball just at the last minute, stopping the clock with 1.59 to go. And it is now going to be second and 10 from the 36 yard line. 1.59 to go in the fourth quarter here in Arlington at Maverick Stadium. <laughs> Shotgun snap back to Crabtree. He's forced out of the pocket. We got a flag on the plate. Still going to throw it down the field, looking for number eight. Throws it wide and out of bounds. And we got an injured player. Looks like Crabtree was hurt on the play. Was that, is that Crabtree on the ground? Mm -hmm. And it was either delay game or false start <laughs> against the offense. So that'll back him up five more yards. There's another flag down the secondary. We'll see if the uh, officials confer and maybe there was more than one. That a holding call against the offense. That only took six seconds off the clock. We were further away. Yeah, I think they're more worried about the yards at this point. 153 is enough time to score from midfield, but you'd much rather be sitting at the 36 than at the 49. And while they're doing that, we can thank some of our staff tonight who are here. Uh, thank the always wonderful and pretty Jessica Trober on the sideline doing our reporting. Our producer, Brian Yurg, he's always there. There's a good way us. to decide, Brian. And we've got Brian and Wisdom Riviera, the director, and uh, uh, Edwin Francis and Veronica Almodovar. We've got Max Thacker down on the camera and Stephen Carter down on the camera. And to my left here, Bobby Studer with the ever, uh, ever so wonderful uh, staff packing ability. <laughs> <laughs> and I also thank Tim McDonald for showing up and doing PA for the Maverick Club team as they, uh, it's always good to hear your names over the PA as you're playing. I love to he see, hear the fact, or know the fact that um, that he did show up. That was nice of him. Shotgun formation, Crabtree back to pass. He's looking to his left. He's got some. He's flushed out of the pocket. He's still rolling to the left. He's at the sideline now. Throws it ahead, and it's going to be caught over the middle by Swinson, who came back and did a great job of helping out his quarterback. But he's not going to gain any yards on the play. And the clock is running with a minute 38 to go. And they are going to call that final timeout. Well, 134. It's now going to be third and 19. And you're obviously in four down territory here. They had a little bit of success passing, passing the ball here. But I think the, the best thing for them to do instead of the, the drop back pass is going to be a rollout to the left-hand side. It's going to be the short side of the field as the ball is on the left hash. But I think that's the best way to get the uh, the quarterback working and maybe bring a, a tight end on a back drag. You can see now on your monitor, it's James Hyden talking to his, his players, trying to figure out what they're going to do to try and slow down the South Alabama offense. 20-16 here. Ball at the 45-yard line. Need to get to the 26-yard line for a first down. Just 134 on the clock. No timeouts remaining for South Alabama. Mavs have two, probably won't expend any of those here as they're just trying to slow down South Alabama and stop them from scoring. South Alabama, a field goal does no good as they're down four points. As the teams come back on the field, thank you for that, Bobby. A uh, minute, like you said before, a minute 34 to go. The one thing I thought would be a major factor well into the second quarter was fatigue. And South Alabama has not been showing any of that as he stands in the shotgun formation. Bradbury drops back, catches the ball, and out of bounds. So great uh, execution on the 10 yard and out post pattern. <laughs> it's a, he rolls out to his left, like you said, be his best technique. When he rolls out to his left, that's his strength. He gets out there and throws that uh, that pass. Brings up the wide receiver gets the ball and goes out of bounds. UTA only sent four on the play, dropping seven into coverage. 
trying to limit any opportunity. You're not going to see any running plays right now. But you saw that defense drop back into cover in the middle of the field. And you got to think no timeouts. A minute 29 to go. You got to guard the sideline. Twins left, twins right. Shotgun formation for Crabtree. Snap is back to him. He's looking to the right. He's got Swinson over the middle. It's to be intercepted by number three, Jaron Begg. Picks off the pass and preserve the UTA Maverick football club victory here right there. over the South Alabama Jaguars. Now they're just going to have to take a knee. South Alabama unable to stop the clock. They used all their timeouts trying to uh, set up that last touchdown. Clock and stops on a change of possession, but that's it. And I got to think going after that punt, blocking it in the end zone, you would have gotten great field position and, uh, and set up yourself in a great, great position, but unable after the block to recover it in the end zone as it went out of bounds and the safety just gonna, is going to you know, be the fatal blow to the Jaguars. Well, it changed the entire face of the fourth quarter, the way things were going for you as a team from South Alabama. It completely changed everything. It changed what your, your whole focus on the game, how you're going to get into the end zone, and what you're going to do. It just Your whole game plan changed because you got shoved to the other side of the field. It's a nice victory here for, for UTF. They lost to Texas State and Trinity. They were unable to score in either one of those games. Now they're going to get a 20-16 victory over South Alabama, who had their own hard time in just getting here. The bus late to pick them up by a few hours. And so, you know, it's not been easy for them. We got a flag on the play. It looked like UTA was just going to take a knee before anything could really happen. A flag comes in from the sideline. And uh, no indication yet. I'm sure there's some jawing going down on the uh, on the field as both teams maybe a little frustrated, a little tired. And the penalty's going to go, it looks like, offsides against South Alabama. Not really going to make a big difference as the game winds to an end here. Just 1.17 left to play here from Maverick Stadium in Arlington, Texas. 20 to 16. The Mavericks here on their home turf in a game they haven't played in a long time. And you got some students and fans down there really excited about seeing their team win. And here comes the entire team. They're going to try and come in and see what they can cause. A minute 17 to go. Here they come, and he's down. And there's still some jawing, but that may be one or two more downs, and that's going to do it. It is going to be third down. And South Alabama just signaled for a timeout. And the back judge appeared to blow the whistle and award it to them. No, he did. He wound the clock, and the clock is still running, and he is going up and telling his players, trying to confirm if they did call a timeout, that is another penalty, but it would stop the clock. Okay. Which is why they're probably accepting, trying to see if they can do that, but they're not going to give it to them. And the clock does stop at 41 seconds, and uh, now he no. winds it. Okay, well, I saw it was number 85. It was, it was Chad Reese. He turned around and tried to signal to the referee for a timeout, but I think player coach on the field. It might be hard he, to keep track of that. He knew what exactly. he was doing. He knew that if he would have gotten a penalty there for illegally calling a timeout, the clock would have stopped. So, And this should do it right here. There's the snap and there's the down and that is going to do it from UTA here at Maverick Stadium in Arlington, Texas. The UTA Mavericks come from uh, retain the lead <laughs> as the last second click off the clock and it is going to be 2016 as the Mavericks win the game against the uh, Jaguars of South Alabama and they go onto the field and the fans love it it is a club win but they are going on the field and let's go live to the side for a fourth win Jessica Sherman Students, faculty, be safe tonight and be sure to designate a drive. All right, well, the teams are, are, are wishing each other a good game. It's been, you know, it's a rough game for South Alabama, roller coaster of emotions. Now they got to get back on the bus and head back to Alabama. I'm sure they ex are exhausted. They only got about 30 minutes of sleep last night. Bus didn't pick them up till 3 a.m. And so uh, it's going to be a long bus ride back. But uh, as Thad said, you know, hopefully they can just sleep this one off and uh, relax. I'm sure they got to be tired after playing two ways on virtually no rest today. And uh, they fought hard all game long. So kudos to them. And thanks for coming to, to Texas and playing some, uh, some club football.
And here is our sideline report to, for, to finish the game is Jessica Trober. We are, uh, Technical the difficulties. Yeah, pardon the interruption. Where there is a big crowd running around her down there. Kind of hard to hear, but we are going to go ahead and let you know the final score was 20 to 16 here at Maverick Stadium at UTA here in Arlington, Texas. The Mavericks coming out with a win over the South Alabama uh, Jaguars. The Jaguars should have been completely exhausted and tired, but they fought hard through the whole game, dominating the ground and the running game and having a pretty, pretty good passing game towards the end, but in the end, it was the Mavericks. And here's something nice that you don't see during, you know, action, you know, football from Division One teams and uh, and licensed programs from from college teams. Instead, you're going to get, you know, the club teams are going to get together and talk after the game and, and congratulate each other. It's just a nice thing that the club programs do to uh, kind of honor one another and say thanks for for joining us for for getting this game together. Well, uh, like we discussed before, we just went over some of the things that were the keys to the game tonight. We had a few technical difficulties on the sideline, but that's okay. It comes with every major professional, absolutely wonderful sports announcing program that we typically put on. So, uh, it, you know, in hindsight, we can sit here and talk about Monday morning quarterback, but I got to admit, for two club teams, those guys really, they really did show up tonight. You're going to get the jawing. You're going to get the penalties. But as far as showing up on offense and some executions, they did pretty good. Well, yeah, and I think the key for the game tonight was the Maverick defense and it, the bend but don't break because South Alabama got inside the 20 yard line six times and only came away with points on two of those occasions. And I think uh, UTH did a really good job of limiting that attack and you know, South Alabama was able to control the ball and we talked about they probably gained more yards tonight than UTA did, but UTA gets the win. A couple big special teams plays really helping them out. Uh, you know, they got a blocked punt earlier in the game. They got the kickoff return and then their punt was blocked but it wasn't recovered for a touchdown. Instead, it went out of bounds for a safety. Probably the best thing that could have happened to him. And two huge key interceptions for Jonathan Johnson, which completely redirected the field game and uh, where they were, the field position game, swinging in their favor for the Mavericks. Uh, another big factor was, like you're saying, the bend but don't break, even though they gave up two touchdowns. One of them was off of a turnover, so they really only had about 10 yards to give, and they it did take them a while to score. And, and things didn't look great for UTA coming out of the locker room. They fumbled the opening kickoff of the second half, and uh, UTA, or South Alabama, was able to score on that next play with a touchdown tied up at 14, and then UTA took the 20 nothing lead. We were both nervous after they, they kicked the PAT and it was blocked that, hey, you know, that could come back to haunt them. But uh, fortunately for UTA, they were able to hold on and preserve the victory. And I'm getting word now that we are ready to go down to the field for a post-game report from Jessica Trober. But go ahead, Jessica. Well, uh, I guess we did lose her. We had a player down there that ended up walking away, had to catch up with someone else. So uh, it, it, with that going, the final score, 20 to 16. The Mavericks in a long, long game, a long, long drought with the out of game here, comes out with a great victory for two clubs. Long drive home, really tired, but you got it. I'm going to give kudos to uh, the offense and the defense for uh, the South Alabama Jaguars. Those guys came in here. We appreciate them coming here. They did a great job. Is, uh, we look forward to meeting up with the game sooner or later. But uh, I'm Thad Trober, and this is Bobby Sutter, and we are signing off saying thank you for joining PennyEntertainment.com, and we will see you next time.